therapy. Here's the voice of the Wildcats, Mark Burning. It's senior night at Homer Center's Memorial Field. Tonight, the Homer Center Wildcats host the Connemaw Valley Blue Jays. Good evening, everybody. With Ward Hilliard, I'm Mark Burdick as we join you on WCCS Radio and on Renda Digital TV for our ITT pregame show. Ward, the uh, Indian summer weather has returned. It's beautiful <laughs> yeah. outside, very warm temperatures for this final game for the boys of fall. And we're not you know, really used to this being week 10, knowing that this will be the final Homer Center game that we will call this season. Yeah, it's a different feeling, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It is a different feeling. It's something we're not uh, too thrilled about, but it is what it is, and uh, we're here to try to get a, a final win, get a springboard into next season. Hopefully the rain stays away. It's really threatening around here. I think we're going to be all right, though. The best chance, from what I was told, is around 8 o'clock, so we will monitor the weather. Ward, it's been a long time since these two teams have met. I thought you'd like to know that it's exactly 6,925 <laughs> days ago. I appreciate that, yeah. Back on November 4, number, November 5th of 2004, uh, week 10, Connemaw Valley came here and spoiled Homer Center senior night, 19 to 16. You rem may remember this game. Now, I was out. That was the year I had a heart attack, unfortunately, but... Connemaw Valley quarterback Robert Gunby hit running back P.J. Sanderson for a 76-yard touchdown pass with 7.56 left in the game. It gave the Blue Jays a 22-19 win at Memorial Field. That was Ed Kalchuk's team at the time, and Gunby was an outstanding three-sport star yeah, at Connemaw Valley. Certainly was. And, uh, you know, that was uh, we've, we've experienced a few of those tough, long-game plays that end up beating us during the course even of this season. So uh, hopefully that does not occur again tonight. Back then it was Travis Deppola, remember that yeah. name, that led Homer Center with 142 yards rushing on 13 carries, scoring uh, uh, a touchdown himself. It was a chippy game, 13 penalties for 152 yards. Uh, both teams dressed just 23 players and finished with 3-7 and seven records. The Wildcats are hoping to duplicate three and seven. Yeah. They'll need uh, a win tonight. You know, and, and the reality is there was a couple of games that you and I both agree uh, may have gone the other way with proper officiating, but that wasn't the case. you got to live with what it is, and so this is an opportunity to win three ball games, get, the, get some positivity going into next season, and there's a reason to be a little positive. I think they got some really talented kids coming back, and, and, and I tell you, Mark, even though they struggled this year, they found some things uh, that you and I were talking about. Uh, kids that we didn't see at the starting lineup the start of the season have really blossomed and made an impact. That's encouraging for next season. Some of the things we'll be talking about as our ITT pregame show and our game coverage continues. Uh, Connemaw Valley, the Wildcats 2-7. and seven. Connemaw Valley just 1-8. and eight, And they pulled that out in the final seven <laughs> seconds with a touchdown and a two-point conversion to defeat winless Connemaw Township on October 6th, 22 to 21. Wow. So they have struggled. Ward, Matt Kent is their head coach. He's in his fifth season. 13 and 33 record, 283 winning percentage. Obviously for Coach Kent and Coach Page for that matter, it's the first time they've met, uh, you know, the, the, each other on the football field. Kent, though, uh, some interesting notes. He played on the 1992 Connemaw Valley District 6 1A championship team that defeated Jerry Page's Laurel Valley Rams at Mansion Park. How about that nugget? Yeah, and I'll tell you, unfortunately, I can remember back in the day when Quantumaw Valley, you didn't want to play them. They, they were a very good program. Uh, they had fallen on hard times of late, but uh, back in the day, they were very good, and Kent's trying to build it back up. His son, Logan, was the Jays' best player in 2021 just a couple of years ago. He rushed for 2,114 yards on 262 carries, scoring 19 touchdowns in a playoff year for them. He rushed for 927 as a junior. He's actually still playing college football at Geneva College. Good. This is another one of the co-ops, by the way. Connemaw Valley co-ops with Ferndale. Ferndale. And uh, it hasn't worked out like some of the other co-ops. This is the fourth year of the football co-op between Valley and Ferndale. Ferndale had only 17 players try out in 2020 and the decision was made in late August to do this co-op. 
the season started late due to the COVID pandemic and uh, the newly joined program finished four and three that year. And it was kind of a good thing that, uh, not because of COVID certainly, but the season was delayed because it was a really challenging situation. You may remember the Wildcats beat Ferndale in the playoffs on the road to the PIAA State Championship yep. game in 2017. So it's kind of sad to see that program go. And of the 32 players on the Blue Jays roster, only six are from Ferndale. So that's a little bit troubling, I would disappointing, think, for Coach Disappointing, uh, I'm sure. It's very disappointing. Ferndale, again, was another one of those programs, you alluded to that, that was pretty strong at one time. And, uh, again, they have faded off, and they can generate the interest again. Get There's some good athletes there. You've got to get them over. Speaking of good athletes, Landon Hill is one of them for Homer Center. When we continue on our ITT pregame show, we're going to give you some milestones that are within reach, maybe one of them going to be a heavy lift for Landon, but there are three that uh, we'll talk about when our ITT pregame show continues from the corner of Lincoln and Harrison Streets in Homer City from our S&T Bank broadcast booth. People Forward Banking, S&T Bank. Our pregame show, our ITT pregame, continues right here on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Well, folks, we finally made it. We're at the final week of the football season. Rivalries, senior nights, and most importantly, several district playoff implications are up for grabs. Hi, everyone. I'm Jake Slobodnik, previewing the season finale of Heritage Conference football with our weekly trip around the Heritage Conference. Playing off the theme of Rivalry Week, our U92 Game of the Week features one of the longest and biggest rivalries in the conference, that being Penn's Manor battling purchase line in a backyard brawl. Join Todd Marino as he's got the call on U92.5 FM and U92Radio.com. The River Valley Panthers are on the cusp of clinching a possible home game in the District 6 2A playoffs, but they'll need some magic from several teams and a win over the Portage Mustangs on the road. Join Chuck Clark and I on Cat Country 106.3 and Cat Country 1063FM.com. Homer Center is celebrating Senior Night at Memorial Field, and the Wildcats look to end the season strong with a win over conference newcomer Connemaw Valley. Mark Burdig and Ward Hilliard have the call on WCCS, WCCSRadio.com, and Renda Digital TV. Other matchups feature the West Shemokin Wolves taking on the Marion Center Stingers, the Coal Bowl featuring Northern Cambria and Cambria Heights, and United Valley battling Connemaw Township. But before we go, here's a quick update on District 6 rankings. In AA, United Valley comes in at the third spot, with River Valley sitting in the fifth spot. West Shemokin is on the outside looking in, currently in the ninth spot. And in single A, Northern Cambria and Purchase Line hold the top two spots respectively, and Cambria Heights is fourth, while Penn's Manor is seventh. Marion Center still has a shot as they come in at number 10. Well, that's going to do it for another year of our trip around the Heritage Conference. Thank you for tuning in and taking the trip with me every single week. Next time we reconvene, it'll be the postseason. Enjoy the final week of games, and I'll see you next time when we take another trip around the Heritage Conference. We're the lifeblood of the community. It's so much more than just a job. So good patient care is providing top quality care, but also in a timely fashion. They don't need to go to Pittsburgh for that. They can stay right here in their backyard. So when a patient walks into your office, you receive them as your family member. A patient leaves my office feeling heard. And the focus truly is on what will get us our best patient outcome. Every moment. Introducing the new Colonial Advantage at Colonial Auto Group, our complimentary program with every new and used vehicle. One year of no charge maintenance, meaning you can enjoy your new vehicle and let us take care of the rest. Plus a lifetime warranty. That's a $2,500 value. The Colonial Advantage program is our way of giving you peace of mind with every Colonial vehicle purchase. Colonial Auto Group, home of the Colonial Advantage. Visit shopcolonialcars.com. 
Luxembourg's Jewelers, a proud supporter of all the area athletes, would like to wish the best of luck to all the Heritage Conference schools and, of course, the Indiana Little Indians this season. With two convenient locations, Luxembourg's Jewelers is the winning choice for gifts of any occasion. Show your school pride with gifts ranging from beautifully logoed coffee mugs, keychains, money clips, water bottles, and more. From the Indiana Mall to downtown Indiana, Hip, Jeff, and the Luxembourg's team wishes everyone an MVP season. Luxembourg's Jewelers is Indiana's Jeweler. Hello, this is Jay. Back to Memorial Field, our executive producer of Wildcat Sports at WCCS is Michael Burdig, and tonight is our board op appreciation night for all of the fine folks that run all four of our radio games. Yeah, we have some food and some, you know, not yeah. adult beverages, but you know what I'm trying beverages, to say. Yeah, yeah. beverages, yeah. It's, it's so good. we appreciate Michael and everything he does for us to keep us together, yeah. right? And our uh, video producer tonight, Dee Ober, uh, filling in for John Smathers, and Dee from SeaWorld Satellites, of course, wonderful partners with Renda Media. And uh, stop by and talk to Dee and Brian and all the crew there for all of your dish network needs and uh, you need uh, an antenna, you know, the old fashioned way, Ward, <laughs> not the rabbit ears, but they can help you out with that too. Hey, I wanted to talk about Landon Hill, some milestones within reach for one of the seniors tonight. He'll, uh, he needs 110 yards to move into third place on the Homer Center all-time rushing list, currently standing at 2,070, 770 yards. Ian Lee finished with 2,879. You going to give him a check on that? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Get to 110. He's going to move into third. Number two on the list, going to be a taller order. He needs 204 yards tonight to reach 1,000 yards rushing for a second straight season. He finished last year with 1120. Yeah. You going with that, too? I, I think so. Uh, they got to have a big game from him tonight, I think, to win. and They're going to feed yeah, the wolf, right? I think he's going to have a shot. And then this would take a monumental effort. 230 <laughs> yards would take him to 3,000 in his career, wow. joining Ben Schmidt and Jesse Lee as the school's only 3,000-yard rushers. Uh, probably not. Okay, so you're <laughs> going to... had a pretty rough year as it is, but <laughs> that's a stretch. Okay, and the Blue Jays, they have a running back... Devin Chontis, he needs 69 yards to reach 1,000 in his senior season. Well, let's hope that doesn't occur, but if it does, good for him. You know, Ward, they had a 1,200-yard rusher last year by the name of Elijah Dar, and I was wondering why the stats, couple carries, three carries, five carries, one carry, so I'm thinking he's battling some kind of injury, and that is true, but... It happened on the last day of school last year he, on what the coach called fun day at Connemaw Valley. <laughs> it wasn't so fun for Elijah Dar. He broke his ankle severely, needed plates, screws, and he's still not pain-free all yeah, this time that, later. that's tough. That's hard, to see. that's hard to deal with. Well, we have a lot more we can talk about, and we will, but we got to get to our coaches' interviews. The Coach Page interview, just a little bit longer because uh, Coach had to get some – uh, special clothing on for the video side of the oh, interview. Your bet. He lost his bet. <laughs> Ohio State beat Penn State. So if you're watching, um, you, you're going to, going to enjoy the first couple of minutes. And if you're not watching, you should probably try to find the link because it's a lot of fun uh, with Coach Greg Page. We'll start our coaches' interviews with Matt Kent of the uh, Connemaw Valley Blue Jays as Michael Burdick fires our Halloween themed music <laughs> in the background as we go to break. Our IRMC ITT pregame show will continue with head coach Matt Kent after this commercial break right here on the Wildcat IRMC Football Network. Hello, this is Jay and Shannon from Hutton Blues Insurance. We pride ourselves on building strong personal relationships with our clients. We are an independent agency offering you the best coverage at the best rate. When you buy insurance, whether it's for your home, car, business, or life, you want an advocate working in your best interests. And that's Hutton Blues Insurance. Route 119 North, just outside of Indiana. We're also honored to have been voted in the top two insurance companies in the 23-24 Best of Indiana County Contest. Thank, Thank you, Indiana, Indiana County. County. 
Homer City American Legion Post 493, a longtime backer of Homer Center Athletics, is pleased to be a part of today's broadcast and wishes the best of luck to the Homer Center Wildcats this season. Homer City American Legion Post 493 has served Homer City and our veterans for more than half a century. They are a staple of the community and believe in giving back. So have fun today, teams. Represent your communities well from your friends at the Homer City American Legion Post 493. This is State Senator Joe Pittman, wishing all of our student athletes and their families every success. Friday Night Lights are always exciting, and I recognize how important it is for students to be involved in activities, whether it be in athletics or the performing arts. I salute not only all of our students, but also all who guide them on and off the gridiron. And I wish all of our hometown teams the best of luck this season. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. Our ITT pregame show continues for Memorial Field in Homer City with Connemaw Valley Blue Jays head coach Matt Kent. And Matt, here we are week 10 already. The seasons go by quickly and the Blue Jays will make their first trip here to Memorial Field since November 5th of 2004. On that particular night, they spoiled Homer Center's senior night, 22-19, to and here we are 19 years later. I guess you'll have the same goal to spoil Homer Center's senior night. Yeah, that's uh, that'll be the plan, I guess, if it's senior night. Don't try and get out there. It's nice to come back down there. I didn't know it was that long ago. But, yeah, it's good to get back down to Homer Center and maybe get it come out with a win. Matt, first year in the conference hasn't gone how you had hoped, of course. Is there anything that has surprised you about the league as a whole, or has it been everything you expected? No, it's been pretty much more than I expected. I mean, I knew there was big kids in this, in this conference, and I didn't realize every game they were going to have kids outside. Us. No, it's, it, it's, it's taken – it's kind of like a growing pain, learning to deal with the, the, the size or getting better at blocking. Our kids ain't, it doesn't bother them no more. Mm-hmm. That's a better terminology. At first, I think it was kind of like a shell shock. You know, we usually had to face a couple big kids. You know, we played Berlin, you know, maybe Myersdale, sometimes a winner, but that was about it. Porridge sometimes, you know, had big kids. Not every game you had to show up, and it was like it was like playing one of those teams. You know what I mean? So it definitely was an eye-opener for us. But we're adapting to it now, and uh, it's only going to make us better, and it's going to help us on the road. Devin Chontis has had an outstanding year. He's 69 yards away from 1,000 yards rushing this year. How sweet would it be to get him to that milestone? It's always awesome to have a kid to, to go over, you know, 1,000 yards rushing. It's, it's good for the students, good for the team. If there's any positive that come out of this year, you know, that's a good positive to have, you know, that you had 1,000 yards back on your team. Last year, I looked at your stats, and I knew you had a running back by the name of Elijah Dar, who's a senior this year. Last year as a junior, he rushed for 1,200 yards, and I had to ask you off of Mike what happened to Dar and you told me that he's been severely limited not because of anything that happened around football earlier this season but uh, toward the end of the school year last year right yeah yeah he had uh, kids being kids and he ended up having a real bad ankle break and he's coming back from that yeah we thought he'd be back sooner and he just ain't back to full speed yet shame for him this senior season had to go this way but we were able to give him a couple carries here and there when he can how different might have things been Matt if you had Dar and Chauntis lining up in the same backfield that that would have probably been a lot different it had definitely been a little easier put it that way finally scouting report on Homer Center what you've seen from them and what kind of game you might expect here tonight at Memorial Field oh I expected I expected to be a just a straight up bang out game you know it's going to be probably you're going to see a lot of running I'm sure each team is going to put Everything they got out there, we, we both have nothing to lose. We're just both trying to get that, you know, to get that final win to end the season on, you know, to end on a good note. And uh, I'm sure they're going to throw everything at us like we're going to throw everything at them. Matt, I appreciate you doing this. Best of luck here tonight. Thank you very much. That's Matt Kent of the Connemaw Valley Blue Jays. When we come back on our ITT pregame show, you'll hear from Homer Center Wildcats head coach Greg Page. That and more as we count it down from Memorial Field in Homer City right here on the IRMC Wildcat Football Network.
Don't miss the Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Whether you want to furnish one room or your entire home, you'll save big. Save up to 40% on custom orders and up to 70% on select floor samples. You'll save on the area's largest selection of in-stock inventory, ready for delivery. Plus, get additional cash discounts or one-year free financing. The Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Dowds of Plumville and Greensburg. Doesn't your home deserve Dowd? Robindale and its affiliated companies are proud to be a sponsor of all student athletes in the area. For nearly two decades, Robindale has been cleaning up refuse coal piles that dot and scar the western Pennsylvania landscape. To reclamate and beautify these areas, Robindale believes deeply in safety, compliance, and community responsibility. If you would like to become a part of the Robindale team, you can contact them at 814-446-6700, extension 122. Or see how Robindale can assist your business at robindale.com. At Mark Arbuckle Nissan here in downtown Indiana, we sell more new Titans than any other dealer in our region of the country. That's because we have more Titans to choose from and we give great deals on new Titans every day. And there'll never be a better time to buy your new Titan truck than right now. And there's no better place to buy your new Titan truck than Mark Arbuckle Nissan. That's Mark Arbuckle Nissan, because if you buy a Nissan someplace else, you'll pay more money. I'm Will Jones. I'm Ocean Jet. We never drop the ball in the field, and neither should you. Call Nick Moore for your wallback insurance needs. Hi, I'm Nick Moore with Wallbeck Insurance, and I can help with all your auto, home, life, health, or business needs. You can reach me at 724-479-9378 at Wallbeck Insurance in Homer City, or get an instant quote at wallbeckinsurance.com. Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club invites you to take a look at the club voted best in Indiana County 2023. Inside, you can find members unwinding with friends and enjoying delicious food like their homemade pizza. You can relax in a club by playing darts, pool, or shuffleboard. The club is a great place to watch your favorite team with family and friends. Proud to sponsor the Wildcats, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club on Neal Road in Grayston. So what sets S&T apart from other financial institutions is that they are visionary. Now, we understand that it is partially about the numbers, but they know it's not just about the numbers. It's about the management team, it's about the strategic and business plan, it's about how the team is going to execute on that. In short, S&T gets it. Quite honestly, we couldn't have done it without S&T. Welcome back to Memorial Field as our ITT pregame show continues with head coach Greg Page. For those listening on WCCS, you obviously can't see how the coach is dressed for this pregame interview. But if you're watching, you know. And if you weren't watching last week, you don't know that we had a little fun wager. I was at the Penn State at Ohio State game, and uh, we had a little bet, coach, that if Penn State won, I would have Penn State garb on, uh, being an Ohio State fan, and vice versa. And wouldn't you know it, the the Buckeyes won, and uh, I must say, you're looking really spiffy in your outfit. I thought it was supposed to just be the hat, but you guys bring the shirt, and then this thing, I don't know. What is that? I, I, I guess something you hang in your yard, or... <laughs> yeah. we we I, we don't have any of those and i'm not drinking out of that cup so you don't want the cup down on the side i know carrie's happy because she's a big buckeye fan and this was so this all gets dumped on me but we lost and i'll i'll own up to it so i wanted to ask you all these years have you ever had a nickname me yeah uh probably a couple over the years i was, I was thinking just you know in light of this beautiful hat and the shirt and everything you have on i think woody page rolls off the tongue really well well remember i said off camera why don't you just make me wear a vest like jim trestle used to wear for ohio state i could wear that on the sidelines but this squares us okay. all right we're good yeah. okay. and we're, we're not going to talk about the michigan game today no okay. no okay we, we, i'd rather root for ohio state <laughs> okay let's roll on with business at hand that's a lot more important but Thanks for owning up and living up to the bet. Season finale here at Memorial Field. It also means it's senior night, Coach. Only five, a small group. I'm not sure if that's the smallest in your 17 years. If not, it has to obviously be close. But uh, every year is just as difficult, isn't it, to say goodbye to those seniors? It is. We had five, I believe, in 2015, and we had only four in 2016. Um, So this is another small group, and 
Uh, but they're right up there with all the other ones because they're all special to us as a staff. Uh, this group of guys, their leadership has been unbelievable. And it's not always rah-rah. There's a little rah-rah. There's a lot of lead by example. I don't think any one of these five guys um, missed anything starting with the first day heat camp. And that's even if they were banged up a little, they still practice. And I think that's a message uh, that really should resonate with our other guys that are going to be returning. And that deserves a lot of credit. It's been a long time since I conducted a Week 10 interview with you, knowing it would be the last pregame interview with you uh, because it's always been heading to the playoffs next. And it's funny, the last time that you had five seniors also coincides with the you know, the last time you had uh, or had missed the playoffs. So definitely a strange feeling not going to the postseason, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're able to schedule some stuff for, for next week for our exit, our team exit meeting, and that felt weird because – you know, in the playoffs, you don't want to schedule because you, you hope to keep playing. But uh, it is what it is. We've had tough times this year. Um, you know, we knew we had a lot, a lot of people to replace. We did have a couple injuries. That's not a great excuse because every other team's had injuries as well. Um, but you know what? You, you just hope for this last game with this group of guys that you can send them out a winner. Uh, I think that will leave a much more positive taste in their mouths. Your body of work, Coach, has really been incredible. I think uh, we take it for – Granted, in the broadcast booth, and fans do too. I know fans cycle through, but uh, we have a 17-year track record together doing these interviews and covering the team. This is just the fourth time uh, that you've finished under 500, and of the 13 uh, times you've been over 500 or better, only two of those were right at 500, and that's really hard to do. It really reminds me, I, you know, I'm, I'm sure you'll be honored me saying it, it reminds me of your uh, late father and what Coach Page did up at Laurel Valley with just being so consistent, and uh, it's a tribute to you and your staff. Yeah, well, mostly to the staff and the kids, quite honestly. I mean, you know, we all work on this together, and I include our, our tremendous fans as part of that, too, in our, in our school system. But, um, yeah, I, I, I have noticed there's some parallels between the two schools, too, with, with what you referenced. But um, it's the kids. I mean, it's kids have always been good and tough here, and we got to get a little bit of that back moving forward. I mean, the kids are great. Uh, they respect us. They listen to us. But, um, you know, as we talked off the air, we got to get a little swagger back, and hopefully we can start with that for tonight. You know, I wanted to mention uh, the 12 teams in the Heritage Conference, one of them, the newcomer, one of the newcomers, Connemaw Valley, here tonight. Next year is going to be interesting when the new enrollment figures are released in late fall or early winter by the PIAA. The 10% rule uh, is gone, which means that schools will have to count all charter school kids, Votech kids, et cetera. It's too really long. Uh, it would take a long time to explain it all. But I know you're going to see a shift in enrollments, and in some cases maybe a pretty dramatic shift. Maybe the Heritage Conference will even be looking at its first AAA school. Is that a concern for you at a small school when you look at yourself in Connemaw Valley here tonight, the Penns Manors, the Purchase Lines, because I had this conversation with Matt Felisic. Do you even think about that? I do. I mean, I, I think about it more um, More this year. We've struggled, and then the co-ops are getting more footing with their programs. Um, a couple of them, it's their second or third year, and they're, they're going to be good every year, and that's those are tough enrollments to go up against. Having said that, we've never backed away or backed down from anybody, but it's getting increasingly tougher for some of the smaller schools. I, I've made comments where I said, like, we're getting to be like we're little brother. Um but it is what it is. That's the, the direction the conference has gone. And then, you know, you have some teams that felt they, like they needed to do that to sustain numbers to give kids opportunities. And I, I don't have an issue with that, but it is harder. And I think the PIAA with the enrollment numbers are finally seeing it the way they should, where every kid should count because we have more and more kids that are doing uh, their education in different ways. So they should all count as one whole kid. 6,925 days since the last time you played the Connemaw Valley Blue Jays. Back on November 4th of 2004, they came here and ruined Homer Center Senior Night. You don't want to have that happen again, right? We don't, no. 19 years ago, yeah, I, th I think I remember hearing about that matchup, like a two-year deal, uh, week 10 between them, if I'm not mistaken. Devin Chantis, pretty good running back, uh, 69 yards away from 1,000. Talk about him and the overall uh, snapshot on what you see from them. Well, you know, I think they're tough kids. I mean, the thing there is they run an offense that's so different than anything else you're going to see with the double wing. And so preparation-wise, it was interesting earlier in the week 
trying to get our kids to simulate that. Uh, they don't have, they're probably one of the few teams that's smaller than us overall in size, to be honest with you. But those smaller linemen come off the ball and, and they have a system. I, I like how they run it. Chaunas is the, is the focal point and he's not very big, but he's a tough kid and they execute it. I mean, we're going to have to, this is the week where if we're going to say, hey, we're going to be more physical, it has to be this week. Finally, last week, Braden Dunn hurt. Freshman Brady Frazier came in, did an admirable job before Dunn returned in the second half. Will we see Frazier at all tonight? It's possible. I mean, I like what they've both done. I mean, we're fortunate that we have two kids like that that are athletic, they're intelligent, and they're tough. So with the quarterback issues that we've had, we've been able to, to go to them. And Braden got a little taste last year, and I had no reservations because I just know what kind of kid he is. Brady has just continued to make, make strides uh, all year in, in all different ways. So uh, it could be because, you know, the thing of it is with, with moving Braden out of the slot or even one of our extra running backs has hurt us offensively too because he's dynamic in those positions as well. So uh, Braden will start, and, and we'll see. We'll take it from there. Coach, thanks for doing this. We'll talk to you for a final time in 23 on our post game show. Thank you guys very much. Head coach Greg Page of the Homer Center Wildcats, Ward Hilliard, will check the Luther Ford keys to the game when we return on the ITT pregame show on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Coach, you're looking good. At Grand Beginnings Children's Center, their focus is on growing and teaching children to be the best they can be. They know children need education, inclusion, and safety. Grand Beginnings has a mission to provide a warm and nurturing environment in which each child can grow physically, emotionally, socially, intellectually, and spiritually. Grand Beginnings Children's Center with two locations in Indiana, teaching children to shine since 1991. Call 724-463-1819. Find them at grandbeginnings.net. Did you know Citizens Ambulance Service is there for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Did you know the annual Citizens Ambulance membership drive is starting? Be on the lookout for membership renewal envelopes in your mailbox. To become a new member, it's super easy this year. Look for the QR codes in the community, just scan the code and it will take you to the membership page. Household memberships help cover the cost of being ready 24-7 for the community. Becoming a new member is easy this year. Citizens Ambulance Service, community support makes it work. Luther Ford, one trusted name, two great locations. And right now, Luther Ford has the wheels in their making deals. Buy a new 2023 Ford Mustang Mach-E and save $10,000 and everyone qualifies. Or lease a new 2023 Ford Escape Active All-Wheel Drive. Just $388 a month for 36 months with no money down. Luther Ford, two great locations, Route 119 Homer City and Admiral Perry Highway Evansburg. At Grand Beginnings Children's Center, their focus is on growing and teaching children to be the best they can be. They know children need education, inclusion, and safety. Grand Beginnings has a mission to provide a warm and nurturing environment in which each child can grow physically, emotionally, socially, intellectually, and spiritually. Grand Beginnings Children's Center with two locations in Indiana, teaching children to shine since 1991. Call 724-463-1819. Find them at grandbeginnings.net. Bad hair day, bad day at the office, bad day behind the wheel. Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your local Erie agent is William G. Meckling Insurance Agency. Get a quote at 724-465-4261 or visit mecklinginsurance.com. Very rate lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. School marching band performing the national anthem as we get set for the season finale 
for these two teams, the 1 and 8 Conoma Valley Blue Jays and the 2 and 7 Homer Center Wildcats who will miss the playoffs for the first time since 2015 ending ending a streak of seven straight seasons and nine of the past 10 and yes, we are spoiled. It also marks just the fourth time in 17 seasons that a coach page team has finished under 500 uh, much like his late father Jerry, a remarkable run of success for Homer Center. War time for the Luther Ford keys to the game, driven by Indiana County's Ford leader, Luther Ford Route 119 in Homer City and online at lutherford.com. What do you have? Well, for Quantum Valley, uh, they got to stop Landon Hill. That seems to be a, a key for every team that plays Homer Center. They force Homer to throw the football. Second thing they've got to do is establish Chantas, their running back, so that they can gain some yardage that way. And uh, the third thing, I think, is most important, Mark, you notice, minus 14 in the turnover ratio. That's not a good number. No. They have to clean that up and not have any turnovers tonight. Of uh, Homer Center, <laughs> again, you get Landon Hill 200 yards. Come on. We can do that. We can do that. That's what we got to do tonight, I think. They got to have him running up and down the field like he should be doing. Uh, defensively, they've got to tackle much better than they have. And I think uh, take advantage of that minus 14 uh, as far as the turnovers are concerned and, and get short fields. So we'll see what happens. Keys to the game driven by Luther Ford in Homer City. We're going to go to break and come back with the starting lineups for both the Blue Jays and the Wildcats when we return on, uh, yes, Michael playing Phantom of the Opera music. It's Halloween almost, right right around the corner. Right here on the ITT pregame show on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. The Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club was founded 65 years ago to support and sponsor a startup midget football program. Some 65 years later, the boosters have grown and now serve as the primary recreational arm of the Homer Center School District, sponsoring various sports such as baseball, softball, elementary boys and girls basketball, and yes, Bears football remains the foundation for our Varsity Wildcats program, teaching the basic skills to our children. Go Bears and go Wildcats from the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club. Don't miss the Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Whether you want to furnish one room or your entire home, you'll save big. Save up to 40% on custom orders and up to 70% on select floor samples. You'll save on the area's largest selection of in-stock inventory, ready for delivery. Plus, get additional cash discounts or one-year free financing. The Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Dowd's of Plumville and Greensburg. Doesn't your home deserve Dowd's? Don't miss the Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Whether you want to furnish one room or your entire home, you'll save big. Save up to 40% on custom orders and up to 70% on select floor samples. You'll save on the area's largest selection of in-stock inventory, ready for delivery. Plus, get additional cash discounts or one-year free financing. The Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Dowd's of Plumville and Greensburg. Doesn't your home deserve Dowd? At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. you back to our s t Bank broadcast booth. People forward banking. Let's get right to those Maine's chiropractic starting lineups. Ward, you will deliver the starting offense for the Conoma Valley Blue Jays, who average 11.1 points per game and give up 37.1. They rush for 166 a game. They pass for only seven yards per game. 171 yards of total offense. That is dead last in the 12-team Heritage Conference, but they do have an outstanding running back. 
Yeah, they do, and uh, we'll mention here. First of all, left end will be Noah Miller. He is a senior 6'2", 200 pounds. Left tackle Noah Griffias. He is a senior 6'1", 205. Anthony Morales is left guard. Or, I'm sorry, left tackle. Left guard. He is uh, a junior 5'10", 200. Tanner Weimer is the center. A sophomore, 5'10", 180. Carson Lauer is the right guard. A senior at 5'10", 205. Michael Morales, a junior at 5'10", 200 is the right tackle. Landon Persinski is the tight end. A senior, 6'1", 190. Quarterback will be Adam Jasper, senior, 6'1", 155. Running backs, Tanner George, a junior, 5'8", 170. Tom Stifler, a senior, 5'9", 150. And, of course, Devin Shantas, a senior at 5'10", 170. And now here come the Wildcats. Yeah, let's give you the Homer Center Wildcats starting offense as produced by Com Media Department head Chris Garitano and some outstanding students who put together their own starting lineups. If you're watching, you'll see the players on Renda Digital TV. And here on WCCS, you will hear the players introduce themselves right now. I'm Bray Tun, I'm 5'9", 160 pounds, and I play quarterback. Jackson Rose, 6'1", 165 pounds, wide receiver, free safety. Hi, my name is Dan Jones, I am 5'9", and I am 143 pounds, and I play corner and receiver. Hi, my name is Will Jones, I'm 5'11", 152 pounds, and I play wide receiver. Landon Hill, 6'1", 205 pounds, play running back and outside linebacker. Hi, my name's Caleb Palmer. I'm a six foot, 200 pound tight end and outside linebacker. All right, my name is Garrett Green. I'm 6'1", 220 pounds, and I play right tackle and DN, full time. Hi, I'm Cade Bernard. I'm 5'10", 195. I play right guard. Hi, my name is Zach Wilson. I'm 5'9", 245 pounds, and I play center. Hi, I'm Josh Luchuk. I'm 170 pounds, and I play left guard. Hi, I'm Elijah Butterly. I'm 5'11", 245 pounds. I play left tackle and right defensive end. I'm Brady Fraser. I'm a 6'1", 160 pound kicker and punter. Every moment. Off is Joseph Toth and the kickoff taken and bringing it and done up the middle over the 40 to the 43 yard line. Our first quarter being presented by friends of Jim Struzzi. Thank you, Jim Struzzi, for all of your support on the kick coverage. Ethan McNulty, a 24 yard return. Grand Beginnings presenting our kickoff. As always, get your children ready to shine at Grand Beginnings Children's Center with two locations in Indiana. And the Wildcats will start at their own 44-yard line after that 22-yard return. That's the way you run them back. Catch them, run straight ahead, find a little gap, good field position. Expect a heavy workload for Landon Hill tonight. 
Braden Dunn, the quarterback, and H back to the left, and Dunn, or it's uh, Landon Hill taking the uh, direct snap, and he's going to be tackled for a loss of a yard by this Connemaw Valley defense that gives up a lot. 37.1 points per game, 225 yards rushing, 108 through the air, 333 yards allowed per game. That's 10th in the conference. Noah Grafius made the tackle for the Connemaw Valley Blue Jays. They set the house in there. They just, they're they're going to cheat up, I'm sure, try to stop Landon. You can see it right here. Empty set. Motion man behind the formation is Landon Hill, and he takes the handoff, cuts it up, and gets to the 45-yard line for a gain of two. On the tackle, it was Carson Lauer, inside linebacker. He leads their team by a mile in tackles with 81 of them. This Wildcat offense averages 20.2 points per game, 166 on the ground, 99 through the air, 265 total. That's seventh best in the conference. Third down and nine for the Cats. Dan Jones in motion. They fake the jet to him, and they're going to throw deep. It's a wobbler, and it's going to be intercepted by Adam Jasper, his fourth interception of the season. Intercepted and by Adam Jasper. That one, I think, just uh, Braden Dunn over. lost the handle on. Yeah, it looked like it. It kind of slipped out of his hand and wobbled out there. Easy pick for Jasper. Boy, not the way you want to start. <laughs> this Connemaw Valley offense... Ward, it'll drive you crazy. It's very tight, kind of like what Winber used to run. Yeah, I was watching their practice. It's a lot of straight T formation stuff. It's interesting. From their own 36-yard line. And it is given up the middle to the fullback, George. And George has 12, 13 yards up near George midfield. Going to be tackled at about the 49-yard line. So that'll be, they put it down at the 48. So a gain of 12, Riley Kobaugh. Listen to this stat, Ward. Riley Kobaugh now tied for fourth on the team with 33 tackles. Yeah, doesn't surprise me at all. He has been just a whirlwind since he's got out that free safety position. <laughs> Chauntis takes the quick toss and Chauntis into Homer Center territory. Chauntis on the carry. To about the 47 yard line. They put it down just inside the 48 for stat purposes. We call that the 47. Game so a gain of about second four. Six. Second down and six for the Blue Jays. Chauntis, 190 yards rushing or 190 rushes for 931 yards, a 4.9 average, four touchdowns. Landon Hill made that tackle. Rain, kind of misty rain blowing south uh, toward the north end zone, actually. And with the football, the Connemaw Valley Blue Jays Chauntis again. Chauntis will be close to the first down. On the tackle, Isaiah McCracken for the Homer Center Wildcats, the 5'9", 221-pound junior linebacker. I looked at the radar. It didn't look like there was a lot more out there, so hopefully this will be the last yeah, blast it, it, of the it, evening. It started that harder earlier, and then it let up. Boy, Homer's giving up big chunks of yardage on this drive. They're going to have to tighten up. As you saw on my chart ward, Blue Jays offense prone to turning it over. They're a negative 14. They have 19 turnovers this season, and the quarterback going to keep it, and he has a first down. I'm pretty sure Jasper on the sneak. Quarterback Jasper Post kept it, and he gets to the 40-yard line. A lot of black down. jerseys in the middle. First and ten, just outside the 40-yard But yard not line. enough. They did get the first down. Somebody's got to make a big play for Homer to stop this momentum. Now, this is four-down territory now for the J Blue Jays. 19 turnovers, only five takeaways for the Blue Jays. That's how you get that negative 14 number. Chauntis wing left, and there's ultra-tight Formation and they give to Chauntis and shows a good uh, a little burst and a pop as he lowered the shoulder and took on a defender and he gets inside the 35 down to about the 33 yard line so seven yards that's a win for our statistician Jerry Rossi in the booth Jerry by the way waved everybody out there in Radio Land Chauntis needs 69 yards Jerry for a thousand so we'll give credit when credit is due. 53 more, Jerry says. Eli Butterly made that last tackle, second down and three for the Jays. 
That's what they want to do, possess the football, keep moving it. Fullback George right in the quarterback's back pocket. This time they give to the right wing and running with the football, it is Tom Stifler. And Stifler inside the 25 to the 24, so they have moved it pretty quickly from their own 36 after that interception down to the 24-yard line. Brady Frazier, the freshman, made that tackle, but a fresh set of downs. A little counter play off of the, with the wing back coming around. We've seen that a lot from Northern Cambria. Boy, that they ran that well, though. Tight end on the left side is Noah Miller for the Jays. They have a motion man, and they give to Chauncey. Bounces it outside to the 15, to the 10. He might take it to the house, and he does for a touchdown for the Connemaw Valley Blue Jays as they march it 64 yards, and the one-win Blue Jays grab the early lead, 6 to nothing as Homer Center just uh, what has plagued them all season long. They can't stop the run. Yeah, they came out flat, I think. Uh, their offense was, was pathetic, and then they... Uh, uh, I just kind of got run over here, Mark. So uh, now they're going to try to kick from placement. Place kicker is Carson Lauer. Only two extra points this season. Snap is uh, bobbled, and the ball's on the ground, and Lauer doesn't look to be the running type, and he's going to be tackled and thrown down. And the two, or the, what turns out to be the two-point conversion is no good. But the Blue Jays strike early. Impressive 64-yard touchdown drive with 7.19 left in the first quarter. Connemaw Valley 6, Homer Center Wildcats nothing on the IRMCWCCS Wildcat Football Network. The Twin Cities Event Hall is the perfect place to host your next special occasion. The Event Hall is located on the grounds of the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, featuring everything you need to make your next event shine. Inside the club, you can find members unwinding in the spacious bar and game room, enjoying great food and just gathering with each other, watching their favorite team. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club and Twin Cities Event Hall, voted best in Indiana County 2023. Did you know Citizens Ambulance Service is there for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Did you know the annual Citizens Ambulance Membership Drive is starting? Be on the lookout for membership renewal envelopes in your mailbox. To become a new member, it's super easy this year. Look for the QR codes in the community, just scan the code and it will take you to the membership page. Household memberships help cover the cost of being ready 24-7 for the community. Becoming a new member is easy this year. Citizens Ambulance Service, community support makes it work. yard line out over the 20 over the 30 to about the 33 yard line or so on the kick coverage Tanner George for the Panama Valley Blue Jays light rain will be blowing into the face of the Wildcat offense they'll start at their own 34 work 7 14 to play they have not led in many ball games, have uh, they? And this, this is disappointing. I know they came out. It's senior night. You really want to make a good impression right off the bat. You take the kick, and you do nothing <laughs> except turn it over. So they've got to have a better second series here. This is going to be a long night. Tight end right is senior, one of five. Caleb Palmer under center is Braden Dunn, and he feeds the football to Landon Hill, and Landon, up the middle for a couple from one side of the 35 to the other. Carson Lauer on the tackle, the inside linebacker for the Blue Jays. They're, they're stacking the, the line pretty good. There's a, eight guys coming up. This is the 22nd all-time meeting between these two schools. First since 2004, Wildcats own a 13-8 to edge. Four of the uh, meetings have come in the PIAA playoffs. Second down and about seven, and they feed it to Landon Hill again. Bounces it outside of the 40-45. Flag flies behind it from referee Dan Antonacy. And this probably will be coming back on a hold. This preliminary was holding Hummer Center. Referee oh Dan Antonacy. Umpire is John Klimkowski. Headlinesman Scott Homer. Line judges Skip Powell, side judge Doug Dell, and field judge A.J. Ellison. So holding negates a nice land and heel run, and it appeared to happen right near the line of scrimmage. Yeah, that's, that's pretty much second and long. About 15. 
Bray up a second down and 16 for the Wildcats back at the 28 yard line. Well, I've been corrected. Second and 16. Second and 16 from the 28, we'll call it. Deep set is Landon Hill as Dunn goes under center, but it's a play action. Throwing underneath, dumps it off, but way too tall for the intended receiver, Kayla Palmer, who was open. And Braden was upset with himself as soon as he released the ball. And the Wildcats in danger of going three and out. Uh, well, they didn't go three and out the first time. They threw an interception, yeah. but they're behind the chains here. Third and 16 from their own 28, almost halfway through this first quarter. Braden's a uh, too bad pass, a tip not typical for him. And maybe the wet weather had something to do with that one, but boy, he, he missed a wide open Palmer there. Six nothing Blue Jays, they scored on the game, their uh, first possession, taking advantage of an Adam Jasper interception. Wildcats go pistol formation, and they hand it off to Dunn. He has running room out over the 30, 35 to the 40-yard line. First down, Landon Hill over the 45, up near the 46-yard line before he's tackled by Michael Morales downfield. But that was more what we expected tonight. Just get him a little gap, get him into that secondary. He's a bull then. 18-yard gain for Landon Hill. Homer quickly up to the line, Mark. Maybe trying to up the pace a little. Well, when you convert a third and 16, you have to like that, and he'll again into Blue Jay territory to the 46-yard line. He'll gain about eight more. Got Isaiah McCracken in now as a lead back, so that eye formation that we've so loved. Carson Lauer on that tackle, His along with Tanner George, 44. It has changed the whole dynamic of this offense. Second and two, and Dunn hands it off to McCracken, and McCracken's going to have first down yardage. McCracken on the carry. For Isaiah McCracken, that's just his 21st carry of the season. But it goes for a first down from the 46 to the 41. Ethan McNulty on the tackle, the weak side outside linebacker. So the Wildcats trying to answer the Blue Jays score. Games around the conference tonight, West Shemokin at Marion Center, playoff implications. Northern Cambria, big one at Cambria Heights. Uh, actually, that game might be at Northern Cambria, actually. It is. Dunn will go under center. Tight end left is Jackson Arone. Caleb Palmer to the right. The two seniors bookending the line of scrimmage. Quarterback keeper and not a good surge at all from the offensive line. Dunn only picks up a yard. Tanner George and Michael Morales on the tackle for the Connemaw Valley Blue Jays. What a bad call if he could find a gap. Couldn't find a gap. And uh, just a yard. The Kraken back in. He's going to be a good runner, I think, Mark. He's stocky. Going to be tough to bring down, I think. Got decent speed. Will Jones, Homer Center's leading receiver and one of the top receivers in the Heritage Conference, split to the left. He has 24 catches for 419 yards and six touchdowns. Sidecar left is McCracken, but they give to Dunn and uh, Landon, or I mean Hill. Landon Hill on the is hit and hit pretty much in his own backfield. Great penetration by Carson Lauer and also 76. No, oh, Griffey. Um, on that well, is there a 76? Yeah, I thought there was. Well, we'll see here. That might be Toth, actually. They may have given us the wrong number. Joseph Toth, they had switched his number from 18. Neither, either way, it's third down and nine. Jackson Arone, receiver to the right boundary in front of the Wildcat bench, and Braden Dunn looking to pass, and he's going to be sacked back at his own 47-yard line as they brought pressure up the middle. And the Landon sack, Persinski. Landon Persinski, that's his third sack of the season. Second leading tackler, and he made a sure-handed handed, uh, tackle play. there. And a loss of nine yards back to the 48 is where and they the spotted. The Brady Cats. Frazier to punt as the clock Brady turns inside of three minutes. Wild it's 6 nothing Connemaw Valley. <laughs> Snap is good from Danny Jones, and the kick is away. And they're going to allow it to bounce. Nope, they pick it up on a hop. And running with the football, it is Ethan McNulty, and he's going to be tackled on the far side of the field at the 20-yard line. 
or so. A 32-yard punt. We have a media timeout on the field with 2.43 to play in the first quarter. It's Connemaw Valley 6 and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. At Grand Beginnings Children's Center, their focus is on growing and teaching children to be the best they can be. They know children need education, inclusion, and safety. Grand Beginnings has a mission to provide a warm and nurturing environment in which each child can grow physically, emotionally, socially, intellectually, and spiritually. Grand Beginnings Children's Center with two locations in Indiana, teaching children to shine since 1991. Call 724-463-1819. Find them at grandbeginnings.net. We're the lifeblood of the community. It's so much more than just a job. So good patient care is providing top quality care, but also in a timely fashion. They don't need to go to Pittsburgh for that. They can stay right here in their backyard. So when a patient walks into your office, you receive them as your family member. A patient leaves my office feeling heard. And the focus truly is on what will get us our best patient outcome. Center held the ball for four and a half minutes, but produced nothing work. Yeah, it, it, a couple of stalled plays uh, it kills the drive. You, you got to keep the momentum going when something's working. Keep running it. Quick stats brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank, and they give it up the middle. And Tanner George, I think that is, with the football, and it is. Might be easier for us to spot that on our monitor. That formation yeah. is so tight in there at the other side of the field. Up to about the 25 and a half yard line. We'll call it a gain of three. Second down and seven. 220 to play in the first quarter with the Blue Jays leading six to nothing. Want to say hello to our good friend Jimmy Sutter. Yes, sir. Sudzy. Second down and seven. And they give it on a little flip to Chontis. And Chontis is going to be pushed back and not a lot going on there on the tackle for the homer center wildcats garrett green one of the five seniors so it'll be gain of a couple it'll be third down and about four by the way jimmy sutter joined the mark burdick <laughs> chapter homer city chapter of the lakers fan club uh, Sunday. Third down and big stop here, Mark. about it's four to go. The game, but this is a big stop for the Wildcats. They have a motion man behind the formation, and they give it, and the flag flies to Chontis. Chontis is upended sure well there's short of the first down. And it's either going to be fourth and very short, or they'll probably oh, take this holding days. penalty. Let's see. Because I, I, honestly, Ward, you're one and eight fourth and short, they may just go for it. Yeah, there's there's nothing to lose tonight. I mean, it's a little different, this kind of game. Yeah, I would take them back and see if Coach Page decides to do that. The Wildcats, just to be frank, have had trouble sometimes stopping yeah. third and long, little, let alone fourth and two. It's a little concerning, two. isn't it? Hey, I want to wish Al Sayani a happy birthday. He's 86 years old, and he's still playing baseball at the over 40 league in Lake Trout. That's, that's amazing. It is amazing. Happy birthday, Al. Timeout called by Connemaw Valley. One sit, whoop, the clock is running, but the timeout was called about at the 118 mark. So timeout on the field. It's Connemaw Valley 6 and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Don't miss the Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Whether you want to furnish one room or your entire home, you'll save big. Save up to 40% on custom orders and up to 70% on select floor samples. You'll save on the area's largest selection of in-stock inventory, ready for delivery. Plus, get additional cash discounts or one-year free financing. The Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Dowd's of Plumville and Greensburg. Doesn't your home deserve Dowd? Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club invites you to take a look at the club voted best in Indiana County 2023. Inside, you can find members unwinding with friends and enjoying delicious food like their homemade pizza. You can relax in the club by playing darts, pool, or shuffleboard. The club is a great place to watch your favorite team with family and friends. 
proud to sponsor the Wildcats, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club on Neal Road in Grayston. Down teams in the 62nd District. Chauntis gets the football, and Chauntis pretty good running room from the 18-yard line. He gets up to about the 28 for a gain of 10, so they're going to basically have the same decision here on fourth down and about four to go. Well, you know, you got the lead. I, I think that's the thing that probably will swing this. You want to kick that ball away. But, but they're not going they're to. They're not going to. <laughs> so quarterback... Adam Jasper under center, unless they go with a long comp, but nope, they snap it, give it to Chauntis. Chauntis gonna be tackled short of that lead chain. The Wildcats come up with a big play, and guess who, Ward? Riley Kobaugh on that tackle. He's our man. They're gonna measure? Wow, I didn't That's think he was even close. Doesn't look like it when the, you look at the replay. Good yard, isn't it? I'm yard of two. What football at the uh, 31? Do we see some some spots even at the professional level that aren't real great? <laughs> Let's see where this one's go. Yeah, he's short. He is short. All right. Wildcats skip the stop. We'll Boy, this is down. this is an opportunity now. You got to take get your offense still cool cooking here. What are, where are they at? 30? 31 or 32? It's always good to be ranked number one. The gold standard of care at IRMC at Chestnut Ridge in Blairsville has not uh, gone unnoticed because IRMC at Chestnut Ridge was voted the best urgent care and walk-in clinic in the best of Indiana County contest. They're open seven days a week for minor. The illness and injury, 8 to 8, every day, located off Old Route 22 in Blairsville, where you can get in, get out, get better, a part of the IRMC family, better health, better life. Football at the 31 of the Blue Jays, so that decision backfires on Connemaw Valley, and Braden Dunn hands it off to Landon Hill, and I'm not sure if he tripped over somebody or just lost his footing. It looked like it. that was the case. We'll see if the replay shows anything. There was a little bit of a hole there. That's, That's probably going to be the final play of the first quarter. Although the Wildcats are lining up. Let's see here if they get it off. Down to six seconds. Braden Dunn looks like he will run it. And he turns Play action pass. Going to throw deep in this one out there, and it's intercepted by Tom Stifler inside the five-yard line. Second time that Dunn has been intercepted, and he just kind of unloaded and threw that up for grabs. There was nobody close to it for a homer center. So the Wildcats off to a rocky start on senior night. It's Connemaw Valley 6, and the homer center Wildcats nothing as we head to the second quarter right here on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat football now. Luther Ford, one trusted name, two great locations. And right now, Luther Ford has the wheels and they're making deals. Lease a new 2023 Ford F-150 Super Crew 4x4, just $4.93 a month. Or lease a new 2024 Ford Edge SE all-wheel drive, now $3.99 a month. Both 36-month leases with no money down. Luther Ford, two great locations, Route 119 Homer City and Admiral Perry Highway, Evansburg. Hello, this is Jay and Shannon from Hutton Blues Insurance. We pride ourselves on building strong personal relationships with our clients. We are an independent agency offering you the best coverage at the best rate. When you buy insurance, whether it's for your home, car, business, or life, you want an advocate working in your best interests. And that's Hutton Blues Insurance, Route 119 North, just outside of Indiana. We're also honored to have been voted in the top two insurance companies in the 2324 Best of Indiana County Contest. Thank, Thank you, Indiana, Indiana County. County. A first quarter that was not stellar for Homer Center. Two turnovers, a sack, and Ofer on their three possessions. So after that interception by Connemaw Valley's Tom Stifler, they open the quarter at their own six-yard line, and Chauntis gets the handoff, and Eli Butterly drops him. 
and Eli Butterly in on the stop. There will be no gain on the play. It'll be second It'll down be second and, 10. and ten. Well, they need to get a little more than that. Uh, the Wildcats do, and you know we talked about the turnover differential. Boy, who would have thought it's going the other way right now? Yeah, the Wildcats in that. Uh, Turnover differential entered the game at minus five. They're now negative seven. The give and Chauntis hit by Jackson Arone gonna Chauntis lose a yard. Had some help coming in Jackson too. Arone. Landon Hill Hillable and Josh Voluchik. Much and better. now no it's the Blue Jays that are behind the chains, Mr. Yeah. Hilliard. Is that not the, a play we've seen go a long way this year many times? Those little pitch outs. First quarter stats. 83 yards rushing for Valley, 25 for Homer Center. No passing yardage for either team. 11 plays, 83 yards for Valley, 12 plays, 25 yards for Homer Center. Time of possession pretty close, 617 for the Wildcats, 543 for the Blue Jays. And with the football and running and a big hole up the middle, 20, 25, 30. With the football running toward uh, the Connemaw Valley sideline, it is Tom Stifler. And Jackson Arone made a touchdown saving tackle, but he goes from his own six to about the 45. So that'll be a 39 yard gain for Tom Stifler. Boy, is, is that a story we've been reading all year long? Third down and long, and they give up the big play. Look at that. That was a counter. Just broke it open. Terrible. Hard to believe the number of times that Homer Center's been victimized by big plays. A lot of them touchdowns. Yeah, and Chauntis on that carry stopped by Landon Hill. Third and fourth down, too, Mark, and that, that's what really kills you. Landon Hill, the leading tackler for Homer Center. The kid has been amazing for the Wildcats in his career. It was short-circuited a little bit in his freshman year. He was hurt in the preseason, but boy, he's really had solid sophomore and particularly junior and senior seasons, yeah. and he plays with a lot of heart, Ward. Oh, yeah. I think they all do that. It's just it, it, for some reason, <laughs> just can't seem to make three plays in a row. Toss right, Chaunt is trying to get to the edge. He stiff arms Jackson Arone. Good sound tackle by Jackson Arone. Big play, big play. Didn't let him loose. They put it back right uh, just shy of the 45, so we'll call it third down and 10. Nine minutes to play, <laughs> nine ten to play in this first quarter. Blue Jays have the Wildcat defense right where they want yeah, them, right? Yeah, third and 10, that's, that's about it. They what got I, 100 I, plays I will, that'll work here. I will say, <laughs> and, I, and not that they, they're not out there trying, but we had a conversation yesterday with a couple of coaches. There's a certain swagger missing from yeah, several uh, of I, the players I totally that agree. they're going to have to learn. Give on a Connor and with the football Stifler, this time they stayed home a little bit better. Isaiah McCracken, Jackson Arone, and it's going to be fourth down. They put the football down at the 48-yard line, so a gain of three. It'll be fourth down and seven. I think they're going to punt, but the punter is the quarterback, so I wouldn't take anything for granted here. Gunner on the right side is Landon Persinski. Snap, and they do get the kick away. It's high and very short. Fair catch called for by Braden Dunn, and he takes it at the 26-yard line. A 28-yard punt and no return. That's how you feel to punt, folks. You got somebody interested in playing punt return? That's what you do. Catch the ball. So with 8.09 left here in the first half, Homer Center will take over at their own 27 yard line, looking to erase what is currently a six nothing deficit. Sidecar to the left of Braden Dunn is Hill, and he throws out in the flat, little bubble screen to Will Jones, short gain, but maybe a little confidence booster for Braden Dunn, yeah, forced out of bounds by Tom Stifler. Out of town scoreboard, Ward, you may wonder why I'm giving this score, but it has uh, some playoff implications for some teams in double A, including United Valley. They would like Penn Cambria to defeat Bald Eagle so they can move up into the number two spot, but right now, end of one, Bald Eagle seven, Penn, Penn Cambria nothing. Interesting score. 
And a fumble, and this one is recovered by Connemaw Valley, I'm almost certain. Inside the 25-yard line at about the 23, it is Connemaw Valley ball, third turnover on the Homer Center Wildcats. And I think coming up with that football for the Blue Jays, let me see here, 50, 58, Carson Lauer, I think. Well, Braden just, uh, he just took his eye off the ball. You can see his head turn as the ball got to him, and uh, he didn't have a prayer after that. It just dropped to his feet, and there comes Paloma Valley. Boy, Homer is just all but trying to give this game away. From the 24-yard line of Homer Center, they go wishbone look. But the quarterback, Jasper, going to keep it around the left end of the 20 as a flag comes in. And this is probably going to come back. Brought down by Brady Frazier. Flag on the play. Line of scrimmage was 24. That was a hold. Holding. A lot can happen to kids after hours and not just on the gridiron. Babies get fevers, children step on glass, athletes twist their ankles. If your child or teen needs care in your doctor's office is closed, IRMC at Chestnut Ridge is open seven days a week from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. Located on Old Route 22 in Blairsville, where you can get in, get out, get better. IRMC at Chestnut Ridge voted best urgent care and walk-in clinic in the Best of Indiana County contest. After the holding, it's first and 18 from the 32 of Homer Center. And they give on a little reverse inside, and Chauncey has a lot of running room and an easy trip to the right pylon. And into the end zone he goes as he takes it home. And with 7.37 left in the first half, it's now Connemaw Valley 12, and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing. Ward, everybody went the wrong way on Homer Center's defense. I don't know if we'll get a replay on the board here, but... 32-yard uh, touchdown run for Chontas. You're on that side, you stay home. You don't go chase, you stay no replay. home. And, uh, you know, well, we've seen it all year, Mark. Get, they're just victimized by those plays around the end. There's nobody home there. I mean, he went around that clean. Flag football, he wouldn't have got caught. Nope. Wow. This is, uh, no, this is a stunner as far as I'm concerned. T formation, it looks like. And Jasper to pass, throws deep left corner of the end zone, and it is incomplete. I think it was Chauntis. It's kind of dark back in that corner. But two-point conversion fails, but the Blue Jays are stunning Homer Center right now. The Wildcats playing arguably their worst football that we've seen all season long, and it's 12-0, Connemaw Valley. Credit the Blue Jays. They've come to play here in this season finale right here on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. Don't miss the Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Whether you want to furnish one room or your entire home, you'll save big. Save up to 40% on custom orders and up to 70% on select floor samples. You'll save on the area's largest selection of in-stock inventory, ready for delivery. Plus, get additional cash discounts or one-year free financing. The Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Dowds of Plumville and Greensburg. Doesn't your home deserve Dowd? up to the 35-yard line or so. Ashton Wilson on the tackle. We're going to mark it down at the 39-yard line. That touchdown drive driven by Luther Ford. Two plays, 24 yards. It took 20 seconds. And the irony of the 24-yard touchdown drive is that it was concluded with a 32-yard touchdown run after the holding <laughs> penalty. Little midget football play there. Inside reverse. So the Wildcats down by two scores and Dunn throws out in the flat and with it is Jackson Arone to the 45 to the 47 yard line where he's tackled by Devin Chauntis. 
Chauntis, the strong side linebacker. Gain of eight, second and two. Gain of about eight yards. Those shorts are open, those short outs, they're open. You gotta loosen the defense up somehow and that's one way of doing it. Dunn hands it off to Landon. He'll land it into the secondary, 45-40. Heads far sideline at the 35-30, 25-20. They're trying to get the angle on him. He's at the 10, he's at the five, he's into the end zone for a Wildcat touchdown. 53 yard touchdown run for Landon Hill. And the Wildcats cut the lead in half just like that. It's 12-6. Good for him. It's a big run. Nice cut. He got into the secondary. And that's what we've been saying all year long. You need to get him in that second level where he can do some damage. He's hard to bring down, plus he's elusive. And he showed it right there. Big score for the Wild. Boy, they need to get out of this funk. Oh, Bad snap. And Brady Frazier going to keep it. And Frazier not going to get anywhere near the goal line. And the kick fails, the two-point conversion run fails. But the Wildcats are at least on the board in what has been a comedy of errors first half. 6.56 to play in the first half from our ST Bank broadcast booth. People forward banking, ST Bank. Our score, Connemaw Valley 12 in the Homer Center Wildcats 6 right here on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. Two plays, 61 yards. It took 34 seconds. Back comes Homer Center. Landon Hill, 53-yard touchdown run. And Frazier's kick end over in, a pretty good one. Taken at the nine-yard line. And with the football for the Connemaw Valley Blue Jays and to the 40, to the 45-50, Frazier gonna try to knock him out of bounds, and he does. That was Ethan McNulty for the Connemaw Valley the Blue Jays the and the Wildcats. Game. Another thing that has led to their two and seven uh, record bad mind. special teams. And really the star of the special teams, he has done a heck of a job, freshman Brady Frazier, but you got to cover. Yeah, he shouldn't have to make that tackle. He's a safety guard. And they, he did what he was supposed to do. Very good job by Brady, but again, I'm sure Carmel Valley's in four down territory right now. 49 yard kickoff return by McNulty. And they flip it, and it is Chauntis to the 30, 25, 20. Guess what? 10 touchdown. He can say hello to Bucko School Teddy beyond the fence, I think, at the party. And he takes it to the house, and they score in one play. 18-6 now, Connemaw Valley, 42 yards for Chontes, who I'm pretty sure is over 1,000 yards for the season. As a matter of fact, Chontes now, 11 carries for 98 yards. Congratulations to him as he's over 1,000, and it's 18-6 Blue Jays. Elmer must be playing strong right defense, because there's nobody on that left side. <laughs> he's run twice there and hasn't been touched. That's embarrassing. They'll go for two. And a flag. Flag on the play. And illegal or delay, delay of game. game That's embarrassing game. too when you get a delay of game on an extra point drive. Yeah. <laughs> well, just give it to Chauntis off the right side. I'm sure he won't have any problems. I'm not trying to be facetious, folks, but you sit here and watch this. This, this isn't typical of Homer Center defense. It's, a, it's, it's embarrassing, and I'm sure they're feeling embarrassed by it, and they've got to correct it quickly. They give on a counter and up the middle. You're right, Ward, no problem. Chauntis right into the end zone from eight yards out, and the two-point conversion is good. Capping off the one-play 42-yard drive that took eight seconds. Wow, Homer Center 
playing extremely poorly here tonight. And they trail 20 to 6 with 6.39 left in the first half on the IRMCWCCS Wildcat Football Network. Hello, this is. Bad hair day, bad day at the office. Bad day behind the wheel. Hey, stuff happens, even to the best of us. At least your car insurance rate doesn't have to take a hit. Get Erie Rate Lock from Erie Insurance. Gives you a great rate that stays put until you change a car, driver, or your address. Plus, seriously good service. Now that's something to smile about. Your local Erie agent is William G. Meckling Insurance Agency. Get a quote at 724-465-4261 or visit mecklinginsurance.com. Erie Rate Lock does not guarantee continued insurance coverage and is not available in all states. Homer City American Legion Post 493, a longtime backer of Homer Center Athletics, is pleased to be a part of today's broadcast and wishes the best of luck to the Homer Center Wildcats this season. Homer City American Legion Post 493 has served Homer City and our veterans for more than half a century. They are a staple of the community and believe in giving back. So have fun today, teams. Represent your communities well from your friends at the Homer City American Legion Post 493. Kick has already occurred as they've been going very quick on us here. And Colin Dockerty covered it for the Wildcats at the 638 mark. They're going to start at their own 35 yard line. So, word in uh, their last two possessions, Connemaw Valley has had the ball 28 seconds. They've run three plays that have gone for 66 yards and two touchdowns. And an eight yard two point conversion run. And with the football and getting hammered in his own backfield and getting up slowly, I think, is that Riley Cobaw maybe? And we have an injury timeout with 6.27 left. Trainer Bob Rupert out onto the field. And Riley is a pretty tough customer. Yeah, he's trying to get up. I'm not sure what he, he may have got the ball jammed in his stomach. And uh, he is in a seated position now. 6.27 left. Here in the first half, it's 20 to 6, Connemaw Valley. Penn's Manor 14, purchase line 7, 8.22 left in the second quarter. Marion Center 7, West Shimokin nothing at the end of one. United Valley 14, Connemaw Township 7. They're over in Davidsville, home of former NH NFL quarterback Jeff Hostetler. Indians 0 and 9. Northern Cambria leading. Cambria Heights 7 0 hmm. as they attend to Riley Cobaw, who now does hop up He's and appears kid. to be no worse for the wear. And as I mentioned, pretty tough customer, Riley. Not that big, but uh, he is one of a few players, and it's a, it's a small group it that sure has is. Uh, played well on defense. He, he has really come to life here about halfway through the season and gave them a lift. Not tonight, though. Hasn't caught on with the rest of the group. It has not caught on. You're right. Second down and 15. Twins left and right. Four receivers in the formation. They give to Landon Hill. And Landon going to be tackled right near the line of scrimmage. Toward the offensive line, too, as that tackle was made by Carson Lauer. You were just hoping by now, you actually you were hoping maybe about the midway point of the season, <laughs> to see some growth, and it just hasn't occurred. Yeah, it, it, it hasn't. Uh, it, it, there's really been very little development. Third down and 15 for the Cats, and done. Pressure up the middle, sacked by the Blue Jays, and he didn't have a chance. Noah Graffius. Noah Graffius. He's their leading sacker, and now I see why. He came, I don't know if anybody blocked him. Wait, uh, we look at our replay in the um, monitor. Can we get one more crack at that, D? Fourth and 25 back we'll at the see. Line. He should have been the strong side defensive end. And they are, Wildcats are getting ready to, to, to punt. So the punt is away, and it bounces over the head of the Blue Jays, Ethan McNulty, so no long return. And a punt that's gonna cover 57 yards and no return. We have a media timeout on the field with 5.15 left in the first half. It's Connemaw Valley 20 in the Homer Center Wildcat 6, right here on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. 
Robindale and its affiliated companies are proud to be a sponsor of all student athletes in the area. For nearly two decades, Robindale has been cleaning up refuse coal piles that dot and scar the western Pennsylvania landscape. To reclamate and beautify these areas, Robindale believes deeply in safety, compliance, and community responsibility. If you would like to become a part of the Robindale team, you can contact them at 814-446-6700, extension 122, or see how Robindale can assist your business at robindale.com. So what sets s and apart from other financial institutions is that they are visionary. Now, we understand that it is partially about the numbers, but they know it's not just about the numbers. It's about the management team, it's about the strategic and business plan, it's about how the team is going to execute on that. In short, s and gets it. Quite honestly, we couldn't have done it without s and Sixty and 101.1 FM, your home for the Wildcats. Well, Conema Valley will have it with 5.15 left here in the first half at their own 23-yard line after that 57-yard punt. And they give it, and that is Elijah Dar. I talked about him on our ITT pregame show. And Dar, a short gain around the left end. On the tackle for the Homer Center Wildcats, Caleb Palmer. Dar is a Palmer senior, 5'11", 180. Game Enters the game, 14 seven. rushes, 39 yards. Last year he rushed for over 1,200 yards as a junior, but he was injured on the last day of school at Fun Day. Hmm. Um, broke his ankle. Bad break, pins, plates, and to this day, he's still not yeah, pain that's, free. That's bad. So that's the reason for Dar's uh, big drop off this season. They give and uh, breaking one tackle for the Blue Jays. It was Tom Stifler, but Stifler not a, another one as Landon Hill finished him off. Hill and and he gets and like a roan up to about the 25 yard line. 4.15, clock running, 20 to 6, Conema Valley, and they will receive the second half kickoff. Homer what didn't possess the ball for a, a minute in that last series, and they had to kick it away. They could have moved down the field and, you know, scored, been down one score. Blue Jays no. two for three on third down. And they flipped the football, and is that Chauntis? That uh, was a quarterback, was I believe, Jasper. Quarterback from the shotgun. Looked like shotgun. a broken yep. play, Morka. No gain, and it looks like they're going to have to no punt game. the football away. Ah, why? So Jasper, as uh, Jasper had the football. <laughs> Just run right. Josh Falucic <laughs> on the tackle. <laughs> Braden Dunn back deep for Homer Center, stands at his own 37-yard line. Field looks great all season long. Yeah, it Greg is. Garanzi and Mookie Wilson, Ed Sutter, the captain of the crew. They've done a great job keeping Memorial Field looking good. Kick from Jasper, very short. You're going to have to watch if you're wearing a black jersey, but nobody around it. It's going to take a wildcat bounce, and that punt didn't travel 20 yards, about 17 to be exact, with 3.02 left here in the first half. Our first Commonwealth Bank halftime show. Right around the corner, we'll have radio replays, a look at the stats, and more. Yeah, they got enough time to run some short passes here and just kind of move down the field with the safe passes. You know they have a penchant for, like, to throw deep. Hasn't worked very well tonight, though, has it? <laughs> they have all three timeouts at their disposal. They got an opportunity to score and get close. Let's see what they do here. Trips, if you're watching at the bottom of your screen, and Dunn does throw out a little bubble screen and went through the hands of Will Jones. He was looking where he was going to get to before he possessed the football. And you can't do that. It's just one of many mistakes Homer Center has made here in this first half. All Hallow's Eve here. Uh, by the way, Halloween is my wife's birthday, and I want to wish her an early birthday. Happy birthday, Bernie. Every day is spooktacular living with you. Second down yeah, and tell 10. You that hey, I want to congratulate <laughs> the uh, if Adam Marshall, the president of the Boosters Club, 
we'll try to get back to it after this play. Direct snap, Landon Hill zigging and zagging his way, but he spun down just shy of the 40-yard line by Tanner George. Adam Marshall, the uh, young Bears, right, won the championship. They were um, they were like eight and zero or nine and zero, something along those lines. Seven and zero, and they won the championship. Good job. So congratulations to them. It'll be a miracle if both of us are around when they get up here. But anyway, third and seven, throwing deep for Will Jones, who takes it. He has the football at the nine-yard line. Braden Dunn to Will Jones, tackled by safety, lone hind line. But the Wildcats are in their Citizens Ambulance red zone, and becoming a member or donating is very easy this year. Just look for the QR codes throughout the community. Community support. Makes it work. Citizens Ambulance and Will Jones made that work. He, he got it, but the, the, the safety coming over just didn't cut in front of him. He could have picked that. They hand it off to Landon Hill. Backs his way. Spins off a tackle and into the end zone goes Landon Hill for his second touchdown of the night as he's celebrating a big night on senior night in his final game wearing black and white. And the Wildcats incredibly find themselves down by just eight. It's 20 to 12. The big pass play to Will Jones and Landon Hill from nine yards out, 20 to 12 Valley. And try from placement again. Both teams have had trouble with this. I don't know if it's a wet ball. Dan Jones, the snapper, Braden Dunn, the holder. Snap a little bit low. Good job by Braden. And it's put down, and the kick is up, and the Frazier's kick is good. Big Brady point. Frazier is now 19 of 22, kicking the football for the freshman. Exactly two minutes left in the first half. The Wildcats probably will feel pretty fortunate to be down if it sticks down by seven. Right now, Conomo Valley 20, Homer Center Wildcats 13 on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Don't miss the Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Whether you want to furnish one room or your entire home, you'll save big. Save up to 40% on custom orders and up to 70% on select floor samples. You'll save on the area's largest selection of in-stock inventory, ready for delivery. Plus, get additional cash discounts or one-year free financing. The Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Dowd's of Plumville and Greensburg. Doesn't your home deserve Dowd? CCS AM 1160 and 101.1 FM. Brady Frazier has it teed up for the Homer Center Wildcats. Who are back in this football game, 20 to 13. There's kind of a bouncing short squib kick that's still live, and it's finally covered by Noah Miller. <laughs> Look who got and him. Riley Kobaugh back in there right in his face saying, hello, Mr. Miller, welcome to Memorial Field. And the Blue Jays will take over that touchdown drive for Homer Center. Four plays, 43 yards. It took one minute and two seconds. Big pass reception there by Will Jones. And a nice run by Landon Hill. Boy, that's the tonic they need. But here's the big question. Can they stop this? Offense. This offense is not that potent, but they're running all over Homer right now. This offense is, I think, ranked 12th in the conference, and that time Eli Butterly doing a good job of tackling Devin Chontis, the 5'10 senior who's gone over a thousand yards in his career. Timeout called by Homer Center. Timeouts all night long brought to you by Luxembourg's Jewelers. With this reminder to visit Luxembourg's.com for great gift ideas for the holidays or any occasion. Luxembourg's Jewelers, serving Indiana and the surrounding area since 1916. So the Wildcats are going to try to get the ball back. They take a timeout. We also want to tell you the Wildcats just cashing in with that touchdown. You can cash in at the Altman Volunteer Fire Department. Play bingo every Thursday at the Altman Volunteer Fire Department. Doors open at 5. Games start at 6.30. Progressive payouts increase by $10 for every 10 players after 60. Come out every Thursday night at the Altman Volunteer Fire Department for bingo. Renda salutes all of the emergency responders and the many volunteers involved at the Altman Volunteer Fire Department located at 58 7th Street 
in Altman, just off of Route 286. And I've heard so many good comments about their bingo and the good time that uh, you can have down there. And it's always good when you win some dough, too, Bingo's Ward. fun. Bingo's fun. B-I-N-G-O. B-I-N-G-O. Bingo was his name. That's it for my team. Second down and 10, Homer Center. Still with two timeouts remaining, that tight formation. And they flip it to Chauntis. Chauntis running room, 435-40, 45-50. Will Jones trying to get the angle on him, or actually that's Volucic, and pushes him out of bounds, but not before he gets to the 25-yard line for a gain of 49 yards. Gain of first down. Incredible. Yeah, it's the same place. It's the same gap. And, and and they had a couple shots out. That's the the bad thing. They had a couple guys bounce off them. Oh wow! Well, so much for the timeouts. <laughs> We're gonna have to try to survive here. One thirty-eight to play in the first half. Just like that, the Blue Jays are at the Wildcat twenty-five yard line. And Jasper, the quarterback, gives on a counter and running room up the middle again. Spins off a tackle with the 10 down to the nine yard line. Goes Tom Stifler. Tom Stifler and okay. not only are the Blue Jays in the Citizens Ambulance red zone, but they have a first in goal. And they go no huddle. Adam Jasper under center, Tanner Weimer. And they flip it to Chauntis. Chauntis breaks one tackle and leans to about the six yard line. Hanging on for dear life for Homer Center was Josh Voluchik. Well, the Cats will not be saved by the clock. They're gonna have to stop them physically. Second and goal at the six yard line and now the Blue Jays want a timeout. Timeouts brought to you by Luxembourg's Jewelers. They remind you now's the time to stop by either Luxembourg's Jewelers uh, convenient locations in Indiana at the Indiana Mall in downtown Indiana to lay away your holiday gifts. They are Indiana's Jewelers, Luxembourg's. Fans, every week, Grand Beginnings Children's Center with two locations in Indiana. They're helping us to help the kids through Renda Media's 45th Annual Teddy Bear Fund Drive, which raises money to fund child health care at IRMC and Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh. Every Friday night, Renda Media airs four football games, and for every point scored during our four broadcasts, Grand Beginnings Children's Center donates a dollar for every point to our Teddy Bear Fund Drive. Through the first nine weeks of the season, that total has now reached $1,563. Renda Media says thank you to Grand Beginnings Children's Center for helping us to help the kids as part of our 45th annual Teddy Bear Fund Drive. Second down and goal from the six. And Jasper keeps it. Jasper going to be pushed back by Brady, Frazier, and Voluchik. They finally blow it dead. Voluchik, I guess I should clarify, as in Sean Voluchik. Under a minute, again, they go no huddle. Inside the five-yard line, and they give up the middle. And no, it's uh, Chauntis that took the flip and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. The ball popped loose, but they're going to rule him, I think, properly so, too, Ward. We'll see if we get a replay here for a touchdown with 39 and a half seconds left, and he was down. And it's 26-13, Connemaw Valley over the Homer Center Wildcats. That is really demoralizing if you're a Homer Center fan, player, or coach as they shove it right down your throat and answer that score. Yeah, they had, what, 80 yards to go? And then they went right down the field. And again, off that right side. 26-13. They will go for two. Jasper under center. And they look to pass, firing for the back of the end zone, and it's caught by the tight end Noah Miller for the two-point conversion. And the Wildcats now stare up at a 28-13 deficit to the Connemaw Valley Blue Jays. Coming back with a kickoff right after this. 28-13 Connemaw Valley on the IRMCWCCS Wildcat Football Network. 
Luther Ford. One trusted name, two great locations. And right now, Luther Ford has the wheels in their making deals. Buy a new 2023 Ford Mustang Mach-E and save $10,000 and everyone qualifies. Or lease a new 2023 Ford Escape Active All-Wheel Drive. Just $388 a month for 36 months with no money down. Luther Ford, two great locations, Route 119 Homer City and Admiral Perry Highway, Evansburg. This is State Senator Joe Pittman, wishing all of our student athletes and their families every success. Friday Night Lights are always exciting, and I recognize how important it is for students to be involved in activities, whether it be in athletics or the performing arts. I salute not only all of our students, but also all who guide them on and off the gridiron. And I wish all of our hometown teams the best of luck this season. On the kick coverage. And these tackle. guys have been playing well of late defensively. They had some breakdowns, but uh, this, this is absurd. So the Wildcats from their own 33, trailing 28 to 13. And it looks like Braden Dunn will go under center. And he's gonna take a knee. And the Wildcats, I can't blame Greg Page. I think it's just like, let's get in the locker room and try to regroup, right? Yeah, I don't know. I, you know, you're getting kicked around pretty good. If I have a chance to score, I'm gonna try to score. Yeah. <laughs> something in the flat, do something. But the way things have been going, it'll probably get another turnover and give up another touchdown, so. That's the end of the first half. Stay with us. For our ITT halftime report, we will have radio replays, a look at the stats, and more on senior night at Memorial Field. Back in 2004, Connemaw Valley came to Memorial Field and handed the Wildcats a seventh loss and ruined senior night. They are on their way to doing the same here tonight. At the break, it's Connemaw Valley 28 and the Homer Center Wildcats 13 right here on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. We're the lifeblood of the community. It's so much more than just a job. So good patient care is providing top quality care, but also in a timely fashion. They don't need to go to Pittsburgh for that. They can stay right here in their backyard. So when a patient walks into your office, you receive them as your family member. A patient leaves my office feeling heard. And the focus truly is on what will get us our best patient outcome. The Twin Cities Event Hall is the perfect place to host your next special occasion. The Event Hall is located on the grounds of the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, featuring everything you need to make your next event shine. Inside the club, you can find members unwinding in the spacious bar and game room, enjoying great food, and just gathering with each other watching their favorite team. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club and Twin Cities Event Hall, voted best in Indiana County 2023. I'm Will Jones. I'm Ocean Jay. We never drop the ball on the field, and neither should you. Call Nick Moore for your Wallback Insurance needs. Hi, I'm Nick Moore with Wallback Insurance, and I can help with all your auto, home, life, health, or business needs. You can reach me at 724-479-9378 at Wallback Insurance in Homer City, or get an instant quote at wallbackinsurance.com. At Grand Beginnings Children's Center, their focus is on growing and teaching children to be the best they can be. They know children need education, inclusion, and safety. Grand Beginnings has a mission to provide a warm and nurturing environment in which each child can grow physically, emotionally, socially, intellectually, and spiritually. Grand Beginnings Children's Center with two locations in Indiana, teaching children to shine since 1991. Call 724-463-1819. Find them at grandbeginnings.net.
The ITT Halftime Show continues, presented by Indiana Total Therapy. World-class rehabilitation with three locations in Indiana County. Learn more at indianatotaltherapy.com. Back with you at Memorial Field on Senior Night, where they will now honor the senior cheerleaders, band members, etc. It's 28-13, Connemaw Valley over the Homer Center Wildcats, and word that fans from the Homer Center area thought, well, here comes win number three the one and eight Blue Jays are coming to Memorial Field and they have struggled all season long surprise surprise because they dominated the football game and Homer Center basically couldn't get out of their own way well you hit the nail right on the head Mark it, it's, it's bewildering to me because uh, I thought these guys were playing better than they were toward the end of the year. They had some breakdowns, naturally, against some good teams, uh, not a team that has just one win. And it, it, it's, uh, it's just a, 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 a mic, what is it, the right word? Is it just a microcosm of the entire year because they've been giving up big play after big play on simple plays, sweeps, nobody home. Uh, I mean, I've never saw people run that open all year long as they have against the Wildcats. Yeah. Yeah, it's unbelievable the number of big plays they have given up. The uh, Blue Jays outscored Homer Center six to nothing in the first quarter. A lot of points on the board in the second quarter, 22 to 13. They outscored the Wildcats, and they take a 28-13 lead into the locker room at halftime. We'll give you all of the replays in a collage as put together by Michael Burdick, with the exception of the last one, which we will have on our post-game show, but here's how the first half unfolded here on WCCS and Renda Digital TV. They have a motion man, and they give to Chauncey, bounces it outside to the 15, to the 10. He might take it to the house, and he does for a touchdown for the Connemaw Valley Blue Jays as they march it 64 yards, and the one-win Blue Jays grab the early lead, 6 to nothing as Homer Center just uh, what has plagued them all season long. They can't stop the run. After the holding, it's first and 18 from the 32 of Homer Center. And they give on a little reverse inside, and Chauncey has a lot of running room and an easy trip to the right pylon. And into the end zone he goes as he takes it home. And with 7.37 left in the first half, it's now Connemaw Valley 12, and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing. Dunn hands it off to Landon. He'll land it into the secondary, 45-40. Heads far sideline at the 35-30, 25-20. They're trying to get the angle on him. He's at the 10, he's at the 5, he's into the end zone for a Wildcat touchdown. 53-yard touchdown run for Landon Hill. And the Wildcats cut the lead in half just like that. It's 12-6. And they flip it, and it is Chontis to the 30, 25-20. Guess what, 10, touchdown. He can say hello to Bucko School Teddy beyond the fence, I think, at the party. And he takes it to the house, and they score in one play. 18-6 now, Connemaw Valley, 42 yards for Chontes, who I'm pretty sure is over 1,000 yards for the season. As a matter of fact, Chontes now, 11 carries for 98 yards. Congratulations to him as he's over 1,000 and it's 18-6 Blue Jays. They hand it off to Landon Hill, backs his way, spins off a tackle and into the end zone goes Landon Hill for his second touchdown of the night as he's celebrating a big night on senior night in his final game wearing black and white and the Wildcats incredibly find themselves down by just eight. It's 20 to 12. The big pass play to Will Jones and Landon Hill from nine yards out, 20 to 12, Valley. Our next senior, Rowan Burton. Yeah, and the uh, Valley wasn't done, however. They started at their own 26-yard line, got a big 49-yard run by Chauntis that took the football to Homer Center's 25-yard line, and then his third touchdown of the night, and uh, with 39 seconds left in the half, it made it 26 to 13, and they tacked on the two-point conversion pass to Noah Miller from Adam Jasper, and it's 28-13, Connemaw Valley stunning uh, Homer Center in a lot of ways, and Homer Center with three turnovers, just uh, as I said, couldn't do much right 
at all in that first half. When we come back on our ITT halftime report, Ward Hilliard will check the stats that shaped up the first half. There's going to be a lot of yardage for Mr. Chontis. We'll be getting to the out-of-town scoreboard and more as we continue with the score. Blue Jays 28, Wildcats 13 on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Did you know Citizens Ambulance Service is there for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Did you know the annual Citizens Ambulance membership drive is starting? Be on the lookout for membership renewal envelopes in your mailbox. To become a new member, it's super easy this year. Look for the QR codes in the community, just scan the code and it will take you to the membership page. Household memberships help cover the cost of being ready 24-7 for the community. Becoming a new member is easy this year. Citizens Ambulance Service, community support makes it work. At Mark Arbuckle Nissan here in downtown Indiana, we sell more new Titans than any other dealer in our region of the country. That's because we have more Titans to choose from and we give great deals on new Titans every day. And there'll never be a better time to buy your new Titan truck than right now. And there's no better place to buy your new Titan truck than Mark Arbuckle Nissan. That's Mark Arbuckle Nissan, because if you buy a Nissan someplace else, you'll pay more money. We're the lifeblood of the community. It's so much more than just a job. So good patient care is providing top quality care, but also in a timely fashion. They don't need to go to Pittsburgh for that. They can stay right here in their backyard. So when a patient walks into your office, you receive them as your family member. A patient leaves my office feeling heard. And the focus truly is on what will get us our best patient outcome. At Diamond Medical Supply, we're always on your team. No matter your sport, you can count on our support. With braces, bandages, biofreeze, and so much more, all to keep you in the game. We're a winning care solution, no matter what you play. Diamond Medical Supply, keeping you healthy this season, because we care about care. Hi, my name is Zachary, and this is a bus that I take to school every day. It's a Smith Bus. We have a really fun bus driver. And guess what? Smith Bus Company is hiring new bus drivers. That's right. Smith Bus Company is hiring positions for full and part-time drivers and driver's assistants. They provide transportation for six area school districts. And they're proud of the work they do. Apply now at smithbusco.com. Equal opportunity employer. With a look at the first half stats, Indiana Total Therapy, world-class rehabilitation with three locations in Indiana County. Back with you on our ITT halftime show. Want to acknowledge Michael Burdig and all of the board ops back at the radio stations. They do an outstanding job for us all season long. It's our board op appreciation night. We're feeding them a little bit of uh, filet mignon and some hors d'oeuvres and a lot of goodies. And we hope everybody uh, is enjoying it. And we thank our own producer, Michael Burdick, who's been with me for so many years, where he makes it easy uh, to drive the bus with the job he does uh, for us and all of our board ops. It's uh, behind the scenes work. And uh, we appreciate it very greatly. Oh, yeah. Folks don't hear them uh, and what they do for us. And uh, we really appreciate it. And that gets into basketball, too. They're excellent uh, year-round. And a tip of the football helmet to D. Ober, too, from SeaWorld Satellites, filling in for John Smathers. And just uh, same routine, too. I look yeah. back just like a normal halftime yeah. here. Excellent Our job. video producer is eating pizza. So nothing... <laughs> Nothing has changed. we got a greasy keyboard back there, but he's making it all work. Hey, we want to say thank you to the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club and Twin Cities Event Hall for making our video streams possible. If you're watching uh, the Wildcat special tonight flashing across the bottom of the screen, large thick crust, one topping pizza, just $10. Additional toppings, $1 each. After all Wildcat games, Friday nights, the pizza oven stays open until 11 p.m. And you can call an order in advance at the Sportsman's Club, 724-479-3985. That's 724-479-3985. And also, Ward, this is right up your alley. Coming November 4th to the Twin Cities Event Hall, Tommy Andresik and Polka Express oh. from 7 to 10. 
$10 cover charge. There used to be some great polka dances down oh, at that hall. Oh, boy. So that's November 4th at the Twin Cities Event Hall. Polka Express from 7 to 10 p.m., $10 cover charge. You used to do a little of that polka stuff. Yeah, there, in <laughs> 17 states in a Caribbean cruise. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, it's fun music, too. If you, you know, I can't dance it, but I love listening to it. Well, let's listen to these stats and see if our fans, I think the Blue Jay fans, will love listening to some oh, of these numbers. Jeez, oh, man. For Quantum Valley, Jasper, the quarterback, four carries, seven yards. Fifteen yards on two carries for the fullback, George. Stifler had uh, six carries, 96 yards, and a touchdown. Dar had one carry for four yards. And, uh, of course, the big gainer was like uh, Chauntus. Chauntus had 15 carries, 155 yards, three touchdowns, 26 rushes. 273 yards and four TDs did not get one yard through the air. So they got 273 total yards in the first half. Pretty easy is yeah. what it was. Uh, you know, let's give credit to where credit isn't due to the Homer D. They're going to have to really shore it up if they have any chance in the second half. For the Wildcats, Landon Hill had a good half. He had 12 carries. Total of 96 yards, two touchdowns. Braden Dunn, three carries minus 20. Those are sacks. 17 rushes, 75 yards, and two touchdowns. Through the air, Dunn was three of seven. Two interceptions, 42 yards. 75 on the ground, 42 through the air, 117. Another poor effort by the Homer offense. Yeah, it certainly was. Thank you, Jerry. 28-13, our score. Connemaw Valley leading as the Homer Center Marching Band performs. We're going to go to break, check the out-of-town scoreboard when we return on senior night from Memorial Field. It's Connemaw Valley 28 and the Homer Center Wildcats 13. You're listening and watching on the WCCS IRMC Football Network. The Twin Cities Event Hall is the perfect place to host your next special occasion. The Event Hall is located on the grounds of the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club, featuring everything you need to make your next event shine. Inside the club, you can find members unwinding in the spacious bar and game room, enjoying great food, and just gathering with each other watching their favorite team. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club and Twin Cities Event Hall voted best in Indiana County 2023. At Grand Beginnings Children's Center, their focus is on growing and teaching children to be the best they can be. They know children need education, inclusion, and safety. Grand Beginnings has a mission to provide a warm and nurturing environment in which each child can grow physically, emotionally, socially, intellectually, and spiritually. Grand Beginnings Children's Center with two locations in Indiana, teaching children to shine since 1991. Call 724-463-1819. Find them at grandbeginnings.net. Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club invites you to take a look at the club voted best in Indiana County 2023. Inside, you can find members unwinding with friends and enjoying delicious food like their homemade pizza. You can relax in the club by playing darts, pool, or shuffleboard. The club is a great place to watch your favorite team with family and friends. Yeah! Proud to sponsor the Wildcats, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club on Neal Road in Grayston. Did you know Citizens Ambulance Service is there for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Did you know the annual Citizens Ambulance Membership Drive is starting? Be on the lookout for membership renewal envelopes in your mailbox. To become a new member, it's super easy this year. Look for the QR codes in the community, just scan the code and it will take you to the membership page. Household memberships help cover the cost of being ready 24-7 for the community. Becoming a new member is easy this year. Citizens Ambulance Service Community Support makes it work. The Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club was founded 65 years ago to support and sponsor a startup midget football program. Some 65 years later, the boosters have grown and now serve as the primary recreational arm of the Homer Center School District, sponsoring various sports such as baseball, softball, elementary boys and girls basketball, and yes, Bears football remains the foundation for our Varsity Wildcats program, teaching the basic skills to our children. Go Bears and go Wildcats from the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club.
Therapy, world-class rehabilitation. Learn more online at indianatotaltherapy.com. And the ITT pre or halftime show not over just yet. We'll continue with the out-of-town scoreboard as the Homer Center Junior Senior High School Marching Band continues to perform. They do an outstanding job all season long. We've seen a lot of good bands this year. Yeah, the, yeah they have. And that's in all seriousness. The conference has had a lot of very good bands. We've had the pleasure of watching some nice halftime shows. This will be the last, of course, for the Wildcats, but they've, they've got a whole bunch of stuff going on during the year. Like United Valley and Blackland Valley, the new co-op. This uh, Connemaw Valley band uh, was a co-op band with Ferndale. Yep. Several Ferndale musicians, and they had a nice uh, pregame performance because Very of much. senior night. The Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club Halloween Party at the Twin City Event Hall tomorrow starts at 7 p.m. with a $5 cover. Cash prize for the best costumes. Ward, you wouldn't even have to really dress up and you could have a chance. <laughs> That's tomorrow at the Twin Cities Event Hall. We say thank you to the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club and Twin Cities Event Hall for making our video streams possible all season long. Well, based on those stats you gave me, Landon Hill, uh, not too far away from moving past Ian Lee into third place all time. Landon needed 110 entering the game, and he's at 96. Yeah, he doesn't so get hurt, he should get 115 hurt. yards away from, from that. Out of town scoreboard. Ward, I'll give you the score, you give me the reaction. And let me find one of my charts here, because I'll look at the playoffs implications. Wes Shemokin was on the outside looking in, uh, in the playoff picture in double A, and they are losing to Marion Center 21 to nothing at the half. I'm assuming Lou Schwartz is still out. That's exactly what I was going to say. They're missing Lou Schwartz. Uh, seems pretty obvious there. But hey, give Marion Center credit. What a turnaround. Homer beat them the first game. Uh, I wasn't Adam Rising, though, I told him, I said, you got a good group. Looks like you guys are going to make some noise. Boy, they have. They've turned it around. They're going to be four and six if they hang on and win that game. Halftime, Penn's Manor fighting for their playoff lives. They lead Purchase Line in that rival game, 14-7. Well, it's because if it's a rival game, you, nothing surprises you who's done what. But that's going to be a battle. Those two really go at it when they, they play each other. Portage needed a win to have any chance of the playoffs. They're hosting River Valley, a double-A school. River Valley fifth in the rankings. I'll get to a score that's going to help them in a moment, but River Valley 21, Portage 6. River Valley has really played well this year. Surprised me. I think you too, for that matter. We weren't sure what they had. They really got a good ball club. United Valley 28, winless Connemaw Township on their way to 0 and 10, 7. Pretty much figured that. Thought something different about this one too. <laughs> Northern Cambria 14, Cambria Heights 3. Looks like Northern Cambria, if they can hang on, they'll be the number one seed in A. You'll be with me next Friday night on Renda Digital TV. What a job by Sam Schutte, huh? He's had guys in and out of the lineup. And he's held it together. One loss, winning tonight against a good Cambria Heights team. Plum in Whippeo action, 21-7 over Indiana as their struggles continue. Ward, as far as a couple scores that uh, uh, will help River Valley, Trying to find it now, thanks to Travis Williams. In the second quarter, Carn City was leading Mount Union 12 to nothing. That's significant because sure Mount is. Union was, was ranked fourth. If they would have won, or if they do win, they'll stay ahead of River Valley. But right now, Carn City trying to help the Panthers. That'd be great. And Bald Eagle 21, Penn Cambria nothing. United Valley hoping for Penn Cambria to win that football game so they can move back into second place, but it doesn't look, look appear if that's going to no, happen. That doesn't look very good. No. So thanks to Travis Williams yes. for those scores. Oh, it's a fun time though, isn't it? You get these matchups and uh, anything can happen in the playoffs because everybody's 0-0 when you start. We will have four games, two on radio next weekend and two on Renda Digital TV. Purchase line will be on U92.5. And uh, let's see, who am I missing here? Oh, River Valley will be on Cat Country 106.3, maybe down from Salzburg. And then on Renda Digital TV, out at United High School, we will have United Valley against their opponent. And we will be traveling to uh, Northern. Northern Cambria 
And who knows, we might have a Heritage Conference first round matchup there, depending on how things unfold. So we'll keep you posted, but a lot of football still ahead on your Renda Media football network of stations. That's our ITT halftime show. We get ready for the start of the second quarter. I would say if Homer Center wants any hope of uh, winning this football <laughs> game, they're going to need to make a stand for a change to open up uh, the second half because they will be kicking off to Conema Valley with the Blue Jays leading 28-13. to Coming back with the start of the second half, and the second half kickoff will be brought to you by Grand Beginnings Children's Center right here on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Homer City American Legion Post 493, a longtime backer of Homer Center Athletics, is pleased to be a part of today's broadcast and wishes the best of luck to the Homer Center Wildcats this season. Homer City American Legion Post 493 has served Homer City and our veterans for more than half a century. They are a staple of the community and believe in giving back. So have fun today, teams. Represent your communities well from your friends at the Homer City American Legion Post 493. At Diamond Medical Supply, we're always on your team. No matter your sport, you can count on our support. With braces, bandages, biofreeze, and so much more, all to keep you in the game. We're a winning care solution, no matter what you play. Diamond Medical Supply, keeping you healthy this season, because we care about care. A county commissioner. Our second half kickoff is being presented by Grand Beginnings Children's Center. Get your children ready to shine at Grand Beginnings Children's Center with two locations in Indiana. Crowd trying to jerk up this team here a little bit. I hear him yelling down here. Brady <laughs> Frazier, the outstanding freshman kicker for Homer Center, who's enjoyed a really nice season, approaches the football in the second half. It's a squib kick and taken through, well, it goes through the hands of Tanner George and it's picked up by Chauntis. And he has all four of their touchdowns and he returns out over the 35 to the 36 yard line. At least two of them on the same play. And the cracking in on the stop for the Wildcats. First down and 10 for the So 11.55 left here in the third quarter on senior night. Well, we'll see how the defense responds. They have got to throw up a wall here and get get the, the ball back for the offense. Conema Valley's offense breaks huddles with seven seniors, three juniors and a sophomore. Adam Jasper hands up the middle to Tanner George, runs through a tackle, has 10 yards, much like the game started on their first possession. It starts the same way here in the second half as Tanner George ran for about 12. Riley Cobaw on the tackle. It is a gain of 13 yards to the 49-yard line. They should move Riley right up into the line. <laughs> They're coming straight up the middle anyway, so he may as well cut the distance down a little bit. George, one of the three juniors, on that carry. Jasper under center, and the motion man is Chauntis, and he takes the little flip, and he's into Wildcat territory. A short gain from the 49 to about 49 of the Blue Jays to the 48 of Homer Center. Josh Falucic on the tackle for the Homer Center Wildcats. Not bad, but not good either. I'm, I'm sure this is going to be like a four down drive here. I guess the line, original line of scrimmage was the 48 and not the 49. So let's give him four yards on that carry from 148 to the other. Jasper hands. And it is Tom Stifler around the left end to the 40, to the 35, to the 30. Close to the 30, maybe uh, going to put his knee down at about the 32-yard line. Jackson Arone, who gets up slowly, made that tackle. A gain of 16 yards from the 48 to the 32-yard line. This is all on the ground for They have not thrown one pass. They're Keep in mind, are standard stuff. this Blue Jays offense entered the game dead last in the Heritage Conference. 166 yards rushing per game. And they have doubled that. And the give to George and Sean Volucic, or uh, Josh Volucic has George, but he actually bounced off of uh, 
that tackle and moved ahead for positive yardage from the 32 to close to the 27 yard line. Four, second and six. So the Wildcats Ward will have a lot of soul searching and regrouping to do in the offseason. Oh my. A lot of question marks now. Second down, a long five. Jasper gives to Chauntis. Chauntis trying to get to the edge. 25 to the 20 yard line. Riley Kobaugh knocks Kobaugh him down, but not before he picks up another first down. For another Blue Jay first down. Hey folks, still looking for a 50 50. Win. Very, very disappointing performance by Homer Ticket Center on so many levels seven, tonight. One, five, Just a one, simple two. pitch. Ticket get to the nine, edge so seven, easily. Seven, one, five, there's no, there's no swarming you to the ball, the there's no box. attacking. And, and when you do that, you're going to get beat. Simple as that. He gets all the momentum the running back does. Once he turns a corner, nobody's going to catch him. Well, they um, have a different look. Looks like Chauntis is going to go from the Wildcat. No, new quarterback. He hands it to Chauntis, and Chauntis is going to be tackled right near the line of scrimmage. Good defense that time by Homer Center, as taking that direct snap for the Blue Jays was Logan Heinlein, the backup quarterback at junior. Eli Butterly on the tackle, and we have a Blue Jay getting up slowly. It, uh, yep, he's uh, hunched over. He is on his feet. Fans, it's always good to be ranked number one, the gold standard of care at IRMC at Chestnut Ridge and Blairsville is once again not gone unnoticed because IRMC at Chestnut Ridge was voted the best urgent care and walk-in clinic in the Best of Indiana County contest. It's no wonder at Urgent Care they will fast track you and get you quick access to their team of medical experts. Highly trained and ready to treat all minor injuries and illnesses. Open seven days a week from eight till eight, located off Old Route 22 in Blairsville, where you can get in, get out, get better. And we hope for Chauntis' sake that is a minor injury. Struggling Although, to get yeah, off the field. Although, yeah, he is struggling to, to get off the field, and uh, that's a pretty big chunk of offense to take out. Yeah, well, let's see what they do. <laughs> Who gets to run to the right now? <laughs> Rain falling again here at Memorial Field. That's very, very light. Fitting. <laughs> they are a yard away from the Citizens Ambulance Red Zone. Community support makes it work, Citizens Ambulance. We hope you can join. So new left wing and uh, with the football Elijah Dar and Dar look at him keep the legs moving. He's the young man that broke his ankle on the last day of school and he picks up 10 yards or very close to it. I think it's going to be enough for a first down. I think you're right. Very we'll close. See where dep depending on where they put it down. Dan Antonacy says first down Blue Jays. If you tuned in late Dar was the young man who rushed for over 1,200 yards last year, and then on the last day of school, he sustained a very serious ankle break that took pins and plates, and he's still in pain. So he entered the game with 39 yards rushing. Coach Kent told me he's just starting to feel better. They give it to the fullback, Tanner George, and George breaks a tackle, and there's an early whistle. I thought I heard a whistle yeah, in my did. headset. We did hear a whistle. And let's see what uh, they're going to do. Dan Antonacy is going to. He's still on the sideline. Wait a minute. Let me find out. Let's see. Will they replay the down maybe, Ward? They're get, line of scrimmage was the 11. Inadvertent whistle. I would imagine that's what you do, but I'm not sure. Wildcat Junior High team won here last night. I think something along the lines of 54 to 14 over purchase line. Wow. They finished uh, right around 500, maybe a game under. And they're still talking this over. Dan Antonacy. When something like that happens. Uh, he's standing in the huddle with Connemaw Valley Blue Jays. Looking on the Renda Digital TV side at some fans in the end zone bleachers. And umbrellas are out. Very, very light rain. So the playoffs will start next weekend. We will have coverage of our hometown teams. Jerry, are you going to be making the playoff trek with the crew? Up in the air, game time decision. His contract calls for it. 
Oh. With a lot of bonus pay. How about Mr. Mester here? We got the foursome together for a change. The band's all back together here. Hurt whistle on the previous play. So we'll replay the down, first and ten. Well, that's a break for Homer yeah, Center, it isn't sure it? Yeah, was. Yeah. He was Seven. Probably. 50 to play here in the third quarter. Conomovelli's possessed the ball the entire uh, third quarter so far, and they're trying to really bust this thing open yeah, even well, more. All kids have shown no interest in stopping anything here. And they give it around the left end and cutting up at the 10, the 5, and down to about the 3 yard line goes Tom Stifler from the right wing. As you mentioned, nothing fancy. And now we have a Wildcat injury and trainer Bob gonna trot on out we're gonna trot out of here on a break as they attend to the injured Wildcat 725 left in the third quarter it's been all Connemaw Valley for the most part Connemaw Valley 28 and the Homer Center Wildcats 13 on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. Luther Ford, one trusted name, two great locations. And right now, Luther Ford has the wheels and they're making deals. Lease a new 2023 Ford F-150 Super Crew 4x4, just $4.93 a month. Or lease a new 2024 Ford Edge SE all-wheel drive, now $3.99 a month. Both 36-month leases with no money down. Luther Ford, two great locations, Route 119 Homer City and Admiral Perry Highway, Evansburg. Cats, I think, just jumped offside, and that will take it half the offside. distance to the goal and the set up cats. second down and a yard, I believe, Ward, unless it'll be enough for a first down. Let's see. I'm looking at the chains, no. Carn City. It is third down, I believe. Well, they're saying first down. No. This is the goal, second and short. S second, oh, second and short. Okay. Second and a yard from the two, and they give it to no one and the quarterback Jasper's into the end zone for a Connemaw Valley touchdown as he bounced off a Wildcat black jersey and went in 34 to 13 and you can see the body language on the team wearing blackboard it's not good and it's 34 13 Connemaw Valley over Homer Center with 704 left in the third quarter uh, you know I gotta believe this is the worst performance this year I mean, they've lost some games by big margins, but that was against better teams. But when you get a team like this coming in that you should beat or you should be competitive with, and you're getting whipped, that's not good. Jasper, who just scored, turns and hands it off to Elijah Dar, who also Elijah takes Darr, it in rather easily. <laughs> and it's 36 to 13. I haven't and seen a Homer quarter. Center team look like this in a long, long time. And it's not a good look. 36-13 uh, Blue Jays over the Wildcats on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Hi everybody, this is the voice. The Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club was founded 65 years ago to support and sponsor a startup midget football program. Some 65 years later, the boosters have grown and now serve as the primary recreational arm of the Homer Center School District, sponsoring various sports such as baseball, softball, elementary boys and girls basketball, and yes, Bears football remains the foundation for our Varsity Wildcats program, teaching the basic skills to our children. Go Bears and go Wildcats from the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club. Introducing the new Colonial Advantage at Colonial Auto Group, our complimentary program with every new and used vehicle. One year of no charge maintenance, meaning you can enjoy your new vehicle and let us take care of the rest. Plus a lifetime warranty, that's a $2,500 value. The Colonial Advantage program is our way of giving you peace of mind with every Colonial vehicle purchase. Colonial Auto Group, home of the Colonial Advantage. Visit shopcolonialcars.com. Officials have just been rotten on uh, timeouts after 
uh, touchdowns where you're supposed to get 70 seconds. They know it's on a, a two media outlets, and they're giving us like 45 seconds. Thumbs down to the officials for that tonight. <laughs> they've, a, they've called a good game. Landon Persinski on the tackle. That touchdown drive, nine plays, 64 yards. It took four minutes and 51 seconds. They've done it consistently to every break after a touchdown has been well short of what it's supposed to be. Yeah. So the Wildcats start at their own 32. Give to Landon Hill, who needs 15 yards to become the third all-time leading rusher. Out-of-town scoreboard, a game that uh, is impacting River Valley's chances of getting a home game. Um, no gain, second and ten. Looking, it is now Carn City 12, Mount Union 7. If Carn City wins, then uh, that would help River Valley, but uh, River, uh, Mount Union is on the board. Second down and 10, and Braden Dunn, play action. Throws it out in the flat to Caleb Palmer. Palmer to the 40, knife down right near that lead chain in front of the Connemaw Valley bench. And should be good for a first down. Adam Jasper, who's scored that touchdown, made the tackle. They, um, you know, that's the same play they overthrew in the first half, and I thought they had to come back to that a lot sooner than now because Palmer was open, and I don't think they could cover him out in the flat. Carn City, by the way, the team that had the, just yeah. the terrible injury to Mason Martin, their quarterback, who is making slow progress, has been in a coma. Give to Landon Hill up the middle, out over the 45 to the 47 yard line. 36-13, Connemaw Valley. They came to Memorial Field on November 5th, 2004 and spoiled Homer Center's homecoming. And they're well on their way to doing it again in a more convincing way. Michael Morales on that tackle, the 5'10", 200-pound junior, and he has a twin brother that's also a tackle on the opposite side of the line, Anthony Morales. They give to Dunn. Dunn to midfield. Dunn with those strong legs. Hill. Or, I'm sorry, Landon Hill with those strong legs. Powers his way to the 47-yard line. Again, getting a lead blocker, Mark. And, you know, I don't want to beat a dead horse. But for another wild saying that all year. That they down. might need to do more of that to get Landon into that secondary. Landon Persinski, defensive end on the weak side, made that tackle. First and 10 Wildcats. 5-10, moving clock here in the third quarter. They go in a pistol formation, and they hand it off to Landon. Landon, good running room from the 42 to about the 37, depending on the spot here. We're going to put it down at the 38, so call it a gain of four. Michael Morales on the stop, on the stop for the second time in three plays. Five, second and five. Five-yard gain, second down and five. And Dunn hands it off to Landon Hill again. Bounces it outside. First down yardage, 35-30 to the 26-yard line. And that will push Landon into third place all time. Adam Jasper on the tackle. And with that carry, Landon has moved past Ian Lee into third place on the all-time Homer Center rushing list. It's a great accomplishment. Sure is. And it's been a joy to watch him. I, told, I saw his mother today, and I said, he's, he's a great kid. I enjoyed watching him. First and 10 from the Blue Jay 26. Snap a little off target, and uh, Dunn did a good job to corral it and hand it off to Isaiah McCracken. McCracken from one carried. side of the 25 to the other, he'll gain a couple to about the 24-yard line. Ethan okay. McNulty on the tackle. Ethan McNulty on the Weak side outside linebacker. And it'll be second, second down and about eight to go. And let's face it, Ward, Landon Hills had to earn everything oh, he's gotten this year. It's been a tough year, no doubt about it. He's, he's hung in there. They go straight eye with Dunn under center. And they feed it to Landon Hill again. And Landon to about the 21-yard line. And again, McNulty leading the Ethan stop. McNulty again on the stop for the uh, Panama Valley Blue Jays on defense. They start six seniors and five juniors. Only 32 on the roster. This is a co-op with Ferndale High School, but only six of the 32 players are from Ferndale. Tight end left is Caleb Palmer. I'd love to see Caleb score 
his uh, first varsity touchdown to give to Landon Hill. And Landon down to about the 15-yard line and should be good for a first down, and it is. Clock momentarily Maybe stopped at the 327 the mark. First down. Very methodical drive, you know, picking up chunks of yardage, going down the field. The only problem is you're down three scores. You got to get something in there pretty quick. Ethan McNulty on the tackle. And uh, Dennis, there is a 32 in the lineup. Yep. And uh, Landon Hill again as they Still continue the to feed him the ball. Homer Center's all time leading ball carrier in terms of uh, most rushes Lauer in a career. Stop. Carson Lauer, the inside linebacker and their leading tackler, made that tackle. Gain of three, second and seven. 250 clock running, 36-13 Blue Jays. Landon has been busy again tonight. Quick stats brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank, 139 yards on 20 carries. Dan Jones, a receiver, if you're watching at the top of your screen, his twin brother, Will, at the bottom of the screen. To the left, they operate toward the north end zone, and they feed it to Hill. Till to the 10, to the 5, and powers his way to about the one-yard line. And it'll be first and goal for Homer Center. Carson Lauer again on the tackle. The Wildcats are in the Citizens Lauer Ambulance the red zone. Scan the codes and support Citizens Ambulance. You can become a member. Just look for the QR codes the throughout the community. Down. Citizens will be there for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Community support really does make it work. First and goal, Homer Center, as they try to cut into this big deficit and the give to Landon Hill, who has his third touchdown of the night. Homer Center's third all-time leading rusher on that drive. And he makes it 36 to 19 as he takes it in from a yard out with 155 remaining in the third quarter. It's now Blue Jays 36, Wildcats 19. Landon Hill's going to work to the end, Ward. He's a lunch pail type of guy. Yeah, he is. He has had a, 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 a great career, injury plagued career, unfortunate for him, but he's really done well when he's healthy. Wildcats will go for two, Dunn looking to pass. Now he's going to tuck it away and it goes in for the two-point conversion. So it's not over yet. Wildcats pull within 15 with 155 left in the third quarter. But at some point, you have to stop somebody. Yeah, stop them, and that's been the problem. Timeout on the field with 155 left in the third quarter. It's now Conomar Valley 36 in the Homer Center Wildcats 21 in the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Robindale and its affiliated companies are proud to be a sponsor of all student athletes in the area. For nearly two decades, Robindale has been cleaning up refuse coal piles that dot and scar the western Pennsylvania landscape. To reclamate and beautify these areas, Robindale believes deeply in safety, compliance, and community responsibility. If you would like to become a part of the Robindale team, you can contact them at 814-446-6700, extension 122, or see how Robindale can assist your business at robindale.com. Wildcat touchdown drive, six, 12 plays, 68 yards. Took four minutes and 53 seconds. They were one for one on third down, picked up five first downs along the way, and Landon Hill also became the school's third all-time leading ground gainer. Brady Frazier, let's see if he kicks off or they go on side here. Maybe try to catch the Blue Jays. And it's a squibber and it's gonna be picked up uh, at the 15 yard line and running with the football for the Connemaw Valley Blue Jays and downed as he gets to about the 25 yard line is Philip Ashcombe. So Ward, if you were wanting to get back into this game, now would be a good time to make a stop. Riley Kobaugh made that tackle on special teams for Homer Center. I think they need to run eight guys across the front, make it too many people to block, and they just swarm. They got to just start attacking. Media timeout on the field with 150 remaining in the third quarter. Connemaw Valley 36, Wildcats 21. Connemaw Valley ball when we resume action on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club invites you to take a look at the club voted best in Indiana County 2023. Inside, you can find members unwinding with friends and enjoying delicious food like their homemade pizza. 
You can relax in a club by playing darts, pool, or shuffleboard. The club is a great place to watch your favorite team with family and friends. Proud to sponsor the Wildcats, the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club on Neal Road in Grayston. The Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club was founded 65 years ago to support and sponsor a startup midget football program. Some 65 years later, the boosters have grown and now serve as the primary recreational arm of the Homer Center School District, sponsoring various sports such as baseball, softball, elementary boys and girls basketball, and yes, Bears football remains the foundation for our Varsity Wildcats program, teaching the basic skills to our children. Go Bears and go Wildcats from the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club. First and 10 Blue Jays at their own 25-yard line, and Adam Jasper flips it, and running is Elijah Dar, and look out, 45 to the 47-yard line. Osha Maritita made the tackle, but not before he gains 23 yards to the 48-yard line. Look familiar? Doesn't matter look who they hand it to. Yeah, it's, it's the same thing. They get cut across, the and yard line. no linebacker support, no cornerback support. No support. <laughs> Sounds like non-support. It's a uh, yeah. It it's you're just, gonna sue uh, for non-support word. I send it. Send the house. There shouldn't be anybody back but three guys. Everybody should be charging in there and plugging those. Oh, look at the hole here. They give it to Stifler on a counter oh. and Stifler the carry Frazier. Stifler the tackled by freshman Brady Frazier and. A gain of about eight yards. It'll be second down and two. From what I see, Mark, they're trying to read what's going on because of the misdirection, and, and they're getting blocked because of that. Instead of just shooting in there, clogging up holes and forcing these runners to go somewhere that they don't want to go. But that's just me. <laughs> second down, two to go. Tight formation as we've seen most of the night and they give it to Stifler again. Stifler around the left end, runs through a tackle to the 40 to the 35 yard line and another Stifler first down. Gain of about nine. Well, when you don't have people there and then eventually uh, every so often you do, you have to tackle. You have to tackle, we said that at, at the opening. Uh, apparently that hasn't sunk in after 10 games. Jackson Arone made that tackle Stifler now over 100 yards on nine carries. What do you call that, Mark? Ole? Ole. <laughs> yep. He'll have to get better. And that, that's, Boy. That'll be high on the list, I think. It's going to be the end of the third quarter. Conor Valley on the march again. They've only end been stopped the three quarter. times Eight tonight. Threes. And they've scored on their other DJ possessions. Uh, that's, what, six times? So, yeah. not a good night for the home team on senior night. It's Conor Valley 36 and the Homer Center Wildcats 21. You're listening and watching on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Introducing the new Colonial Advantage at Colonial Auto Group, our complimentary program with every new and used vehicle. One year of no charge maintenance, meaning you can enjoy your new vehicle and let us take care of the rest. Plus a lifetime warranty, that's a $2,500 value. The Colonial Advantage program is our way of giving you peace of mind with every Colonial vehicle purchase. Colonial Auto Group, home of the Colonial Advantage. Visit shopcolonialcars.com. At IRMC, we have all of the necessary pieces in place to perform complex operations, including highly skilled and specially trained surgeons, their support team of experts, and advanced technology like the Da Vinci Robotic Surgical System. As a result, patients spend less time in the hospital, recover faster, and get treated close to home. So there's no reason to puzzle over where you should get your surgical care. The answer is right here at IRMC. The Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club was founded 65 years ago to support and sponsor a startup midget football program. Some 65 years later, the boosters have grown and now serve as the primary recreational arm of the Homer Center School District, sponsoring various sports such as baseball, softball, elementary boys and girls basketball, and yes, Bears football remains the foundation for our Varsity Wildcats program, teaching the basic skills to our children. Go Bears and go Wildcats from the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club.
by injury, uh, a bad break that occurred on the last day of school, but he's running with authority tonight. Brady Frazier finally made that tackle. Bald Eagle Ward, uh, that's ho former Homer Center Superintendent Kurt Weitzel's new school. Yeah. First and 10, they're in the Citizens Ambulance Red Zone, and the ambulance has been very busy. A lot of red lights for Connemaw Valley in that Wildcat Red Zone, and the give to Dar on that little flip in Dar to about the 14-yard line. Not bad when you have a 1,200-yard rusher from a year ago as your primary backup who's just finding his way back from that uh, injury and surgery. The team you're running against doesn't tackle. Yeah. They, uh, they're they going to the same area. They, uh, you got to come into that hole. Somebody's got to come in from a linebacker, stuff it up. It's not happening. And they're getting run over. Light mist falling here at Memorial Field. Second down and four from the Wildcat, 14. Uh, again, they cheat uh, Dar, but they give it up the middle on Stifler. Busts it inside the five, Stifler down to about the four. Brady Frazier tripped them up for the Homer Center Wildcats, along with Riley Cobar. Cobar there again. There's two names right there, Mark, that are going to be big parts of this program in the next year. But they need to fit in a few more, though. Over 400 yards rushing tonight, a team that entered the game with 166. Ouch. Jasper under center on first and goal from the four. And they give it to Dar. Dar right up the middle following the center, Tanner Weimer, Carson Lauer, and Anthony Morales, the guards, and basically untouched into the end zone with 10-12 left in the football game. It's Connemaw Valley 42 and a dispirited Homer Center Wildcat squad 21 as they just uh, continue to pile up the yardage and make it look easy. Just no resistance. It's, just, it's too easy. And that just builds confidence in the Quantum Valley team. They're going to attempt the extra point out of placement. Carson Lauer, right-footed soccer-style kicker out of the hold of Jasper, or, or Stifler, that is, and the kick is blocked by... Homer Center's Jackson Taylor, a promising freshman. But the Blue Jays on the board again with 10-12 left in the football game. It's now Connemaw Valley doubling up Homer Center, 42-21 on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network and our Renda video streams, as always, presented by the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club in Twin Cities Event Hall. Introducing the new Colonial Advantage at Colonial Auto Group, our complimentary program with every new and used vehicle. One year of no charge maintenance, meaning you can enjoy your new vehicle and let us take care of the rest. Plus a lifetime warranty, that's a $2,500 value. The Colonial Advantage program is our way of giving you peace of mind with every Colonial vehicle purchase. Colonial Auto Group, home of the Colonial Advantage. Visit shopcolonialcars.com. Every moment. Not tackling, not showing any aggressiveness. They look like they're trying to come in, but uh, I, I haven't seen any penetration at all from the defense. And, and you don't get that against these counters. You'll get to run them all night. Kick, far sideline, nice convenient hop, Braden Dunn and the junior over the 20 and up over the 25 yard line to about the 26 or so. Braden Dunn is a young man that plays hard, Ward, and gives you everything he has. Yeah, he certainly has. Keep in mind, you know, he didn't start the year out as a quarterback. He's had to develop skills in that area. He'll be back next year, and uh, they're hoping to have someone else quarterbacking. And <laughs> hopefully Angelo Alexander will be back. But who knows? 
26 yard line. <laughs> one thing for Homer Center, you can look 6.2 miles south and River Valley won one game last year. That's true. And they're going to win, what, their eighth tonight? They have two losses, yep. It can be done, but it's going to be a massive overhaul and rebuild to give to Landon uh, Hill. And oh, Landon Hill stopped right near the line of scrimmage. That's the difference right there. I'm only able to crack any holes with a running back the caliber of Landon Hill. Can't even get him into the secondary. No, Graphius on the stop for the Blue Jays, strong side defensive end. We're under 10 minutes to play in the game. 42-21 Blue Jays. I don't think anybody expected this. Snap and they've done fakes it and uh, keeps it and can't get around the left end. They're gonna drop them for a loss. Well, I will admit I did not expect I'm this, carrying. but credit Matt Kent and the Blue Jays for coming to play here tonight. You know, everybody looked at it, one win team. Homer Center, a chance to pick up well, another win, but Connemaw Valley was looking at a two win team saying, hey, we yeah. can go pick up our second win. They, they had a pretty good game last week. I can't recall who they played. They lost, but they were very competitive. Third got, down and about 11 to go for Homer Center. And to give to Landon Hill. Landon backs his way for a couple. Hill on the carry. And the Wildcats send out the punt team. Everett leading Claysburg out of town scoreboard 27 to 14. So that should uh, about do it for Claysburg as far as the playoff picture. Carson Lauer on that tackle. Wildcats are going to go three and out. Brady Frazier to punt it away. Dan Jones, the long snapper. Pretty reliable long snapper, and that's important facet of the game. Dan Jones has done a pretty good job. There's a fumble. I think he touched that ball, and let's see who came up with it. I think he got it back, and that's the way it's gone for Homer Center is Ethan McNulty did not do a good job fielding that punt. We see the replay on our monitor in the booth, and it went off of his hands, and then he was able to scramble back behind him to the 42-yard line and pick it up. So, you know, Connemaw Valley Ward, you talked about it. You saw it on the chart. They were a minus 14 yeah. in turnover ratio, but they haven't turned it over tonight. No, they, it, you know, everything we talked about that was uh, uh, in the plus side for the Wildcats is not come to fruition. Well, I'll tell you what, you're <laughs> lousy at giving keys to the game. <laughs> as far as accuracy uh, goes. Yeah, I didn't make it on either one. Elijah Dar takes the flip oh, and he's God. into the secondary, into Wildcat territory. Inside the 40 down to the 36 yard line. A gain of 22 yards for Elijah Dar. Jerry, they gotta be approaching 500 yards in offense. Ocean Maritita on the tackle for the Homer Center Wildcats. There's a linebacker out there. There doesn't seem to be any. <laughs> he turns into the upfield. He's untouched in that secondary. Dar entered the game, 14 rushes, 39 yards. Where's he at now, Jerry? Quick stats brought to you by First Commonwealth Bank and Dar, 84 yards. He's approaching 100. Jasper now watching the clock, mercifully. Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah. Dar breaks a tackle, spins down to the 25-yard line. Dar on the carry. And Greg Page has the tough task of climbing up to talk to us on the post-game show. Dar from the 36 to the 24. That'll be a gain of 12. And he has 96 yards rushing. They, they have two very good running backs from what I've seen here tonight. They have an offense. And a actually, a three. That Stifler's a pretty good. They do team. have seven seniors on offense, so I don't know how good that uh, looks for next year. Yeah, I mean, okay. and you're one and eight this year, soon to be two and eight. Dar, this time they fake it to him, give it uh, inside to Stifler, Stifler and, and Stifler gets down to about the 19-yard line for a gain of six. Even <laughs> it's been. You look at it where you think, well, they didn't Literally defense that too bad, but it, too, not too bad is still six yards. Yeah, you have not six tackled four. guys for losses or things of that nature, which you, you got to do on defense. You got to get into that backfield 
They're in the Citizens Ambulance Red Zone. If you're watching, you see it on the screen. Community support makes it work. Thank you, Citizens Ambulance, for all that you do. Look for the barcodes and become a member. Or go online and find membership information. They give it to Tanner George, the fullback, who's done a good job George on the carry. blocking tonight. And uh, the odd carry Josh that he's got, Volucic he's been effective. Josh Voluchik on the stop for Homer Center, but three it'll be about a yard shy of the first down. When they snap the football, we'll be inside of six minutes in this football game. Wildcats are going to drop to 2-8, and eight, their worst season since they suffered through the school's only winless season in the history, which dates back to 1923 in 2011. And that team was played much better than what we're seeing here. Yes, they did, to be honest about it. The give to George. George fights for a first down. Voluchik on the tackle for the Homer Center Wildcats. Back in 2011, that, two, that team had a lot of freshmen and sophomores that you could yep. kind of, you knew something special could happen, uh, and it did, because in 2013, they won a District 6 championship. Like advancing to state playoffs here. It was a little bit of a snowstorm that night at Mansion Park. I remember it well. It was timely. Well, it was cold, too. <laughs> First down and 10 for the Jays at the Wildcat 12 yard line. Dar takes the handoff. Dar going to be plowed under as he gets to about the oh, nine okay. yard line. Off the bottom of the pile, Baluchik, Jackson Arone also being credited as we turn inside of five minutes remaining in the game. So they'll turn out the lights for the final time at Memorial Field in what has been a disappointing season for Homer Center. They will open up the 2024 campaign. Guess who's coming to town? United Valley on August 23rd of next year. Dar takes the handoff. Dar, short gain, down to about the seven yard line. And I don't give the impression that, you know, these kids aren't going to play harder. They are playing hard. They're doing the best they can. It just, it just seems to lack something. And, uh, you know, you can't, you can't put your finger. I'm sure the coaching staff is Struggled all year trying to find the answer. Three 100-yard rushers, Zar, Stifler, and Chauntus, who was injured. He had 197. Third down and five from the six-yard line. And what do we have? Jump offs. Illegal procedure on the Blue Jays. Very few penalties. The Blue Jays came in averaging 11 <laughs> points a game. Their biggest output was 34. Or wait, um, I'm wrong on that. I'm looking at the wrong side of the scorecard here. Um, 20, they had not scored more than 22 points this season. It was 22-21 over Conema Township, and they have 42 on the board. It's hard to imagine. Yeah, it sure is. Third down sure and is. 10 to go. Football back at about the 12-yard line. And they give it to... Stifler, Stifler down inside the three Stifler to about the two-yard line for a gain of nine. Oh, line of scrimmage was the 11s, not the 12. Gain of nine, four than one. Nine yards, I mean, it's the same inside trap, inside reverse, whatever you want to call it, inside counter. It's the same play, though, and, and you got to step in that hole. Somebody does. They had only scored more than two. Nine yards, jeez. They scored two touchdowns or less in eight of their nine games prior to tonight. Fourth down, a yard to go. Jasper under center, and he gives to Dar, and Elijah Dar is in the end zone for another Conema Valley touchdown. And with 2.48 remaining in the football game, an embarrassing night for Homer Center. It's 48 to 21, Blue Jays. I think you said it all. I can't make much more comment on it. It's, they just got pounded at the same place, either side of the ball, and uh, even on the outside. It's, it just was a total whooping. They will go for two. Fullback 
is Tanner George. Dar in motion and Jasper wants to pass. Throws deep in the end zone and it is caught by Stifler for the two point conversion. And they have a round number 50 on the board here tonight against the Homer Center Wildcats. 2.48 remaining in the game. If there's any consolation, we're clearly in the mercy rule. <laughs> no, no, we're not. Nope, I take that back. It's only 29. 50 to 21, Connemaw Valley over the Homer Center Wildcats. We'll have a Blue Jays kickoff after this on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. I'm Will Jones. I'm Ocean Jet. We never drop the ball on the field, and neither should you. Call Nick Moore for your wall back insurance needs. Hi, I'm Nick Moore with Wallbeck Insurance, and I can help with all your auto, home, life, health, or business needs. You can reach me at 724-479-9378 at Wallbeck Insurance in Homer City, or get an instant quote at wallbeckinsurance.com. on Oakland Avenue in Indiana, official supplier for sports teams' medical supplies. Kickoff taken by Sean Baluchik, who uh, did a good Belichick job in mop-up duty last week in the loss to purchase line. Goes down at the 29-yard line. Touchdown drive, nine plays, 58 yards. Took five minutes and 27 seconds. They picked up four first downs along the way. And with 2.45 to go, looking at the Wildcats, we in all likelihood, the, final possession of the game. We need that guy that played taps for Ligonier Valley that one night. We were, <laughs> it was so appropriate. Yeah, it certainly was. That was the band, wasn't it? Yeah. They didn't do it to mock Homer Center. Well, who no, knows? No, it was part of their presentation. Oh, that's right. It was halftime, right? It just, it would just fit in perfectly. From the 29-yard line, Braden Dunn has gone the whole way, and he hands off to Hill the, carry. the workhorse, Landon Hill. Jerry, what's Landon's yardage right up to date? I don't think he's going to get to that next milestone that we had on our list. Power on now, if he song. needed 25 carries, 159 for Landon, unless he takes one to the house here. And Landon breaks a tackle, breaks another tackle, 40. How about taking it to the house? 50, 40, right sideline. And he's going to be knocked out of bounds inside the 30 at about the 25-yard line or so. Well, maybe not out of the uh, question yet. He needed 204 yards to reach 1,000 this season, which would give him back-to-back 1,000-yard -back uh, seasons. And they're going to put it down at the 23-yard line, which I think was generous. 44-yard gain for Landon Hill. So that's we got a little bit of drama left, Ward. Yeah. If they can uh, take it to uh, the end zone, and Hill picks up all the yards, who's got to be totally exhausted by now. Yeah, he's got to be. Jerry, what's uh, <laughs> Hill there? I don't know that he gained a yard, Jerry. No gain. No gain. No gain. 27 carries. 203 yards. Woo! He's getting close. One more yard would give him a back-to-back 1,000. And Hill has it, and Hill has a 1,000-yard season. Inside the 15 down to about the 14-yard line as he goes over... 200 Hill yards. Landon Hill for the second consecutive season has gone over 1,000 yards. <laughs> On a bad team. Yeah, hard to believe Landon. Uh, big night for Landon, but uh, goes for not. They have Caleb Palmer in the backfield. Ward, I know they were trying to put a package in to get Caleb a, a touchdown if they got down close to the end zone. Caleb Palmer on the carry. But they're not down close to the end zone yet, and the Wildcats are going to take a timeout, I think Wildcats. maybe for that reason. 53 and a half seconds remaining in the football game. Our coverage from Memorial Field continues with the score Blue Jays 50, Wildcats 21 on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. 
Hi, my name is Zachary, and this is the bus that I take to school every day. It's a Smith bus. We have a really fun bus driver, and guess what? Smith Bus Company is hiring new bus drivers. That's right. Smith Bus Company is hiring positions for full and part-time drivers and driver's assistants. They provide transportation for six area school districts, and they're proud of the work they do. Apply now at smithbusco.com. Equal opportunity employer. Did you know Citizens Ambulance Service is there for you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? Did you know the annual Citizens Ambulance Membership Drive is starting? Be on the lookout for membership renewal envelopes in your mailbox. To become a new member, it's super easy this year. Look for the QR codes in the community, just scan the code and it will take you to the membership page. Household memberships help cover the cost of being ready 24-7 for the community. Becoming a new member is easy this year. Citizens Ambulance Service, community support makes it work. Supply on Oakland Avenue in Indiana, official supplier for sports teams' medical supplies. As we come back, they give to Landon Hill. Landon does not go down without a fight, right? And he gets close to the 11-yard line. Wildcats will have a first and 10 from just outside the tent as they are in the Citizens Ambulance red zone. Remember, look for the QR codes, ambulances around the county, and... Uh, you can become a member too. Scan that QR code. It'll take you right to the landing page to become a member. And as I was looking at my sheet, the word what happened there? I was looking away. They ran away. that little tight end flare pass to uh, Palmer, and he did not get to the end. He was headed in there, but they cut him off. Wildcats are going to take a timeout. I know Coach Page would love to get Caleb Hill or Caleb Palmer, I should say, a touchdown. Yeah, they can get a first down without getting a touchdown, so they got some options here with 24 seconds to go. Fans, a lot can happen to kids after hours and not just on the gridiron. Babies get fevers, children step on glass, athletes twist their ankles. If your child or teen needs care and your doctor's office is closed, IRMC at Chestnut Ridge is open seven days a week from 8 to 8. Since 2009, IRMC at Chestnut Ridge, Old Route 22 in Blairsville, where you can get in, get out, and get better. And our timeouts all season long presented by Luxembourg's Jewelers. Now's the time to stop by either Luxembourg Jewelers locations to lay away your holiday gifts. Luxembourg's Jewelers, downtown Indiana and at the Indiana Mall, serving Indiana and the surrounding area since 1916. All right, let's see what the Wildcats can dial up here. Second down and three. Football at about the four-yard line. And Caleb Palmer is in the backfield. And they hand it to Caleb. Caleb going to be hit and dropped. Connemaw Palmer Valley doesn't allow it to happen. And the Wildcats will take their final timeout. And I think they might have to pass it to Caleb if they want to get a, yeah, that first so. ever touchdown. We're going to take our final break of regulation. There will be no overtime, by the way. 19.2 seconds left in the game. It's Connemaw Valley 50 and the Wildcats 21 on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. The Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club was founded 65 years ago to support and sponsor a startup midget football program. Some 65 years later, the boosters have grown and now serve as the primary recreational arm of the Homer Center School District, sponsoring various sports such as baseball, softball, elementary boys and girls basketball, and yes, Bears football remains the foundation for our Varsity Wildcats program, teaching the basic skills to our children. Go Bears and go Wildcats from the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club. Avenue in Indiana, official supplier for sports teams' medical supplies. Well, it'll be third down and three for Homer Center from the four-yard line. Final score, Marion Center shuts out West Shemokin 27 to nothing. Northern Cambria beats Cambria Heights in the Coal Bowl 28 to 11. It was Penn's Manor 22 purchase line, 19, four minutes left. Last report we had. Dunn looking to pass, looking underneath, throws to Caleb Palmer, and there it is! A touchdown for Caleb Palmer. He had one stolen away from him at West Shemokin by a poor call, but he's on the board. You're not going to take that one away. Celebrate Caleb Palmer on senior night. It's 50-27, to 27, Connemaw Valley, but I'm sure that still feels good for number 21. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it does. Nice job. Nice pass there by Dunn. 
50 to 27 the score. And the Wildcats will just go for two here with 14 seconds left in the game. Done under his center. Bobbles the snap, looking to pass. Nobody there, now throws deep in the end zone for Palmer, who calls it in for the two-point conversion pass. So done to Palmer, back-to-back -back plays. One goes for six, one goes for two. And with 14 seconds left in the game, it's 50 to 29. Connemaugh Valley over the Homer Center Wildcats. We'll break for 30 seconds, come back and wrap things up before we get to our post-game show. 50 to 29, Connemaugh Valley over Homer Center on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Milk every moment. Sports teams medical supplies. Eight plays, 71 yards. It took two minutes and 29 seconds. Drive summary driven by Luther Ford in Homer City. Brady Frazier has it teed up for Homer Center. And he'll just kick it away and over the head it goes of Connemaw Valley and into the end zone for a touchback. Went over Ethan McNulty's head. And Connemaw Valley will take it at the 20 yard line, which is a Piata Boy rule that needs changed. Every other level yeah. of ball, it's at the 25. I don't really understand the logic, Ward, why that wouldn't have been changed either. by now. And, uh, there's a lot. High schools now that have kickers that can put it in the end zone, so that would be a good rule to change. Oh well, well this ought to be a knee here, I hope. <laughs> yeah, I would think so. Jasper under center, if that's still Adam Jasper, it appears to be, and he does take a knee. Jasper and the final knee. eight seconds are ticking off the clock. And that will bring an end to tonight's well, back on November 5th of 2004, Connemaw Valley's last visit to Memorial Field. They came and spoiled Homer Center senior night, and son of a gun, if they don't do it again. Back then, both teams finished three and seven. This year, both teams finished two and eight after a convincing 50 to 29 victory for the Connemaw Valley Blue Jays over the Homer Center Wildcats. Stay with us for the first Commonwealth Bank post game show. We will have radio replays, interview with head coach Greg Page, and a look at the stats. Some massive numbers in this football game. Three 100-yard rushers for the Blue Jays as they win it going away 50 to 29, ending what was a thoroughly uh, frustrating and disappointing season for the home team. 50 to 29 Blue Jays. Stay with us for the first Commonwealth Bank post game show up next on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Have you dreamed of blazing fast internet speeds and unlimited data? Well, dream no more. Introducing SeaWorld, your gateway to a seamless online experience. Thanks to T-Mobile's revolutionary 5G internet, you can now get lightning fast connectivity right in the comfort of your own home. And it's only $50 a month. For more details, call Brian, SeaWorld's friendly and knowledgeable sales representative at 724-463-3200, extension 122. SeaWorld, the future of internet is here. Every moment. 
Did you know Citizens Ambulance Service is there for you 24 hours a day, seven days a week? Did you know the annual Citizens Ambulance Membership Drive is starting? Be on the lookout for membership renewal envelopes in your mailbox. To become a new member, it's super easy this year. Look for the QR codes in the community, just scan the code and it will take you to the membership page. Household memberships help cover the cost of being ready 24-7 for the community. Becoming a new member is easy this year. Citizens Ambulance Service, community support makes it work. The Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club was founded 65 years ago to support and sponsor a startup midget football program. Some 65 years later, the boosters have grown and now serve as the primary recreational arm of the Homer Center School District, sponsoring various sports such as baseball, softball, elementary boys and girls basketball, and yes, Bears football remains the foundation for our Varsity Wildcats program, teaching the basic skills to our children. Go Bears and go Wildcats from the Homer City Area Athletic Booster Club. Now the first Commonwealth Bank postgame show on WCCS AM 1160 and 101.1 FM and online at WCCSradio.com. Here's Mark Burdick with radio replays from tonight's game. Thank you, Michael. And we do have a lot of radio replays in a convincing 50 to 29 victory for the Connemaw Valley Blue Jays over the Homer Center Wildcats. They last visited Memorial Field November 5th of 2004 and spoiled the Wildcats senior night. And they did it again 19 years later. And they had three 100-yard rushers in this football game. Homer Center just couldn't stop them. It's been the same story for Homer Center all season long as both teams finished 2-8. and eight. We're going to walk you through this football game with a whole bunch of radio replays that we've strung together. And here's how this game unfolded as Michael Burdick compiled it back at WCCS. They have a motion man, and they give to Chauncey. Bounces it outside to the 15, to the 10. He might take it to the house, and he does for a touchdown for the Connemaw Valley Blue Jays as they march it 64 yards, and the one-win Blue Jays grab the early lead, 6 to nothing as Homer Center just uh, what has plagued them all season long. They can't stop the run. After the holding, it's first and 18 from the 32 of Homer Center. And they give on a little reverse inside, and Chauncey has a lot of running room and an easy trip to the right pylon. And into the end zone he goes as he takes it home. And with 7.37 left in the first half, it's now Connemaw Valley 12, and the Homer Center Wildcats nothing. Dunn hands it off to Landon Hill, Landon into the secondary, 45-40. Heads far sideline at the 35-30, 25-20. They're trying to get the angle on him. He's at the 10, he's at the 5, he's into the end zone for a Wildcat touchdown. 53-yard touchdown run for Landon Hill. And the Wildcats cut the lead in half just like that. It's 12-6. And they flip it, and it is Chauntis to the 30, 25, 20. Guess what? 10, touchdown. He can say hello to Bucko School Teddy beyond the fence, I think, at the party. And he takes it to the house, and they score in one play. 18-6 now, Connemaw Valley. 42 yards for Chauntis, who I'm pretty sure is over 1,000 yards for the season. As a matter of fact, Chauntis now... 11 carries for 98 yards. Congratulations to him as he's over 1,000, and it's 18-6 Blue Jays. They hand it off to Landon Hill, backs his way, spins off a tackle, and into the end zone goes Landon Hill for his second touchdown of the night as he's celebrating a big night on senior night in his final game wearing black and white, and the Wildcats incredibly find themselves down by just eight. It's 20-12. to 12. The big pass play to Will Jones and Landon Hill from nine yards out, 20 to 12 Valley. Under a minute, again, they go no huddle. Inside the five yard line, and they give up the middle. And no, it's uh, Chauntis that took the flip, and he's into the end zone for a touchdown. The ball popped loose, but they're going to rule him, I think, properly so, too, Ward. We'll see if we get a replay here for a touchdown with 39 and a half seconds left. And he was down. And it's 26-13, Connemaw Valley over the Homer Center Wildcats. That is really demoralizing if you're a Homer Center fan, player, or coach as they shove it right down your throat and answer that score. 
Or, oh. Second and a yard from the two, and they give it to no one, and the quarterback Jaspers into the end zone for a Connemaw Valley touchdown as he bounced off a Wildcat black jersey and went in 34 to 13, and you can see the body language on the team wearing blackboard. It's not good, and it's 34-13, Connemaw Valley over Homer Center with 7.04 left in the third quarter. First and goal, Homer Center, as they try to cut into this big deficit and they give to Landon Hill, who has his third touchdown of the night. Homer Center's third all-time leading rusher on that drive, and he makes it 36 to 19 as he takes it in from a yard out with 155 remaining in the third quarter. It's now Blue Jays 36, Wildcats 19. Jasper under center on first and goal from the four. And they give it to Dar. Dar right up the middle following the center, Tanner Weimer, Carson Lauer, and Anthony Morellis, the guards, and basically untouched into the end zone with 10-12 left in the football game. It's Connemaw Valley, 42, and a dispirited homer continue to pile up the yardage and make it look easy. Jasper under center, and he gives to Dar and Elijah Dar is in the end zone for another Connemaw Valley touchdown. And with 2.48 remaining in the football game, an embarrassing night for Homer Center. It's 48 to 21, Blue Jays. Dunn looking to pass, looking underneath, throws to Caleb Palmer, and there it is! A touchdown for Caleb Palmer. He had one stolen away from him at West Shemokin by a poor call, but he's on the board. You're not gonna take that one away. Celebrate Caleb Palmer on senior night. It's 50 to 27, Connemaw Valley, but I'm sure that still feels good for number 21. Yeah. It did in the two-point conversion. Same combo, Dunn to Palmer made it 50 to 29. Final score, Blue Jays with three uh, rushers over 100 yards led by Devin Chontis, who went over 1,000 for the season, 197 yards rushing. They rolled up 476 yards on the ground. No passing yards. The Wildcats, 261, as Landon Hill finished his career with 215 yards rushing, back-to-back 1,000-yard -back uh, seasons for Landon, who finishes as the Homer Center third all-time leading rusher in school history. But the Blue Jays win it. 50 to 29 over the Homer Center Wildcats. When we come back, we'll be hearing from head coach Greg Page. We'll take a look at the stats. We may do that first. Uh, we'll see if coach makes it up in time as we roll on on our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show. A disappointing senior night here at Memorial Field for the home team. Connemaw Valley, to their credit, they really played well, didn't turn it over, and uh, that was an Achilles heel of theirs all season long, but not tonight. They forced three turnovers on the Homer Center Wildcats as they win it here at Memorial Field, 50-29 to over Homer Center. More to come on our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show in the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. <laughs> Hello, this is Jay and Shannon from Hutton Blues Insurance. We pride ourselves on building strong personal relationships with our clients. We are an independent agency offering you the best coverage at the best rate. When you buy insurance, whether it's for your home, car, business, or life, you want an advocate working in your best interests. And that's Hutton Blues Insurance, Route 119 North, just outside of Indiana. We're also honored to have been voted in the top two insurance companies in the 2324 Best of Indiana County Contest. Thank, Thank you, Indiana, Indiana County. County. Homer City American Legion Post 493, a longtime backer of Homer Center Athletics, is pleased to be a part of today's broadcast and wishes the best of luck to the Homer Center Wildcats this season. Homer City American Legion Post 493 has served Homer City and our veterans for more than half a century. They are a staple of the community and believe in giving back. So have fun today, teams. Represent your communities well from your friends at the Homer City American Legion Post 493. This is State Senator Joe Pittman, wishing all of our student athletes and their families every success. Friday Night Lights are always exciting, and I recognize how important it is for students to be involved in activities, whether it be in athletics or the performing arts. I salute not only all of our students, but also all who guide them, on and off the gridiron. And I wish all of our hometown teams the best of luck this season. 
Dan in a van hasn't returned your call? Chuck in a truck can't get there for two months? Stop dealing with fly-by-nighters and call a company that's fully capable for all your plumbing and heating needs. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated is on call 24-7, 365 days a year. Visit us at JoycePlumbing.com. That's JoycePlumbing.com. Joyce Plumbing, Heating, and Air Conditioning Incorporated. The best place in town to take a leak. PA 042115. Hilliard, you asked me a question off mic during the commercial break. How many points Connemaw Valley had scored coming into tonight's game? Through nine games, they had scored exactly 100 points, and they scored half of that tonight. It's hard to, hard to figure. Uh, Sports uh, in general I'm sometimes. I'm going to be talking to a fellow shortly that's probably scratching his head, too, as to what happened. Yeah, we'll we'll find out. But uh, let, let me give you the stats here real quick, Mark. Uh, Jasper had five carries, nine yards, and a touchdown. Uh, George, the fullback, six carries for 40. Stifler had a good night, 12 carries, 127 yards. Dar checked in, <laughs> finally gave him the ball in the second half. He 11 carries, 103 yards, two TDs. And then Shantas. Uh, Chris, Chris, coach down there? Coach down there still? I think he's coming up. I saw him coming to the right here, Mark. But I don't know if he kept coming that way or not. Finally, Shantis had 19 carries, 197 yards, four touchdowns, 53 rushes, 476 yards, four and seven rushing TDs, not one Slight. yard passing. For the Wildcats, good night for Landon Hill, and deservedly so. I did say he could make it, and he did. He had six carries, 215 yards, three touchdowns. Uh, bu- bu- Braden Dunn had uh, four carries, minus 22. McCracken, two carries, six. Homer had, had Palmer had uh, f- two carries for no yardage. For, uh, Homer ended up with... Uh, 38 rushes, 198 rushing yards, three touchdowns through the year, just six of ten, two interceptions, one touchdown pass, total yards passing 63, total yards rushing 198, and that totaled out. Jerry did not get right me by the your total. thumb. 261. 261 yards. Thank you. So total yards 261 for the Wildcats and 476 for the Connemaw Valley Blue Jays. We're going to come back with Homer Center Wildcat head coach Greg Page when our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show continues for a final time from Memorial Field on a disappointing senior night. Blue Jays 50, Wildcats 29 on the IRMC WCCS Wildcat Football Network. Don't miss the Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Whether you want to furnish one room or your entire home, you'll save big. Save up to 40% on custom orders and up to 70% on select floor samples. You'll save on the area's largest selection of in-stock inventory, ready for delivery. Plus, get additional cash discounts or one-year free financing. The Dowd 73rd Anniversary Sale. Dowd's of Plumville and Greensburg. Doesn't your home deserve Dowd's? Robindale and its affiliated companies are proud to be a sponsor of all student athletes in the area. For nearly two decades, Robindale has been cleaning up refuse coal piles that dot and scar the western Pennsylvania landscape. 
To reclamate and beautify these areas, Robindale believes deeply in safety, compliance, and community responsibility. If you would like to become a part of the Robindale team, you can contact them at 814-446-6700, extension 122, or see how Robindale can assist your business at robindale.com. At Mark Arbuckle Nissan here in downtown Indiana, we sell more new Titans than any other dealer in our region of the country. That's because we have more Titans to choose from and we give great deals on new Titans every day. And there'll never be a better time to buy your new Titan truck than right now. And there's no better place to buy your new Titan truck than Mark Arbuckle Nissan. That's Mark Arbuckle Nissan, because if you buy a Nissan someplace else, you'll pay more money. I'm Will Jones, I'm Ocean Jet, and we never drop the ball in the field, and neither should you. Call Nick Moore if your Wallback Insurance needs. Hi, I'm Nick Moore with Wallback Insurance, and I can help with all your auto, home, life, health, or business needs. You can reach me at 724-479-9378 at Wallback Insurance in Homer City, or get an instant quote at wallbackinsurance.com. Very much, Michael and head coach Greg Page joining us in our press box here at Memorial Field. And coach, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time on a night you'd probably like to forget other than uh, honoring the seniors and everything they've meant to you. Um, it's just hard to believe what I witnessed on the football field tonight. They came in, Ward asked me off mic during the, earlier in the postgame show, how many points did they score all season long? And I added them up and I said 100 exactly. And they scored half of that tonight uh, against uh, your defense that uh, was just bewildered out there. I don't know how else to say it. I don't either. Um, it's frustrating to say the least. Credit goes to Conemaw Valley because they came off the football. Um, they created seams and they got after people downfield. Uh, we tackled poorly. Uh, we looked like at times we didn't want to st stick a shoulder in and tackle people. They deserve a lot of credit. Um, their backs ran hard. Their guys came off the football. Um, they weren't very big, but they run their offense well, and, and we were concerned because, you know, they, they moved the ball on other people, but oftentimes did not finish. Well, they finished tonight because you can't let people get going for, you know, 15, 60-yard runs and expect that you're going to win the football game. So Something they did all season long they didn't do tonight, too, turned it over. They led uh, the turnover ratio in a negative sense by a mile, and uh, they forced three tonight and didn't turn it over themselves right yeah they deserve credit I mean I, I talked to their coach before the game and after the game and um, yeah I knew they were going to come out they have they have senior leadership they have they have a lot of seniors it's gonna be the last time they play you know when you have 12 of them sometimes that can influence things a lot better than if you have five and um, you know our kids battled again we can't keep playing catch up and we're you know getting it down to two scores one score and then all of a sudden they just broke it open in the second half and I give them all the credit, but it's frustrating. I, I, I wish I had answers. Um, I apologize to our guys. Uh, obviously, I need to do some things better, um, and we just didn't get it done. Let's talk some positives. Landon Hill, uh, what a lunch pail type of running back he was yeah. for you uh, in his career, particularly these last two years. You asked me during the break if he went over 1,000, and he did. He finished with 215 yards rushing on 29 carries, it looks like, and also moved past another good running back, Ian Lee, in the third place yeah. all time, and he wasn't that far away from 3,000 in his career. Talk about that senior. Well, I thought he got the 1,000 because we, we gave him a ball afterwards, and I just wasn't sure. Nobody had told me near the end, but I think that one long run near the end where he got set up before the last touchdown, um, you know, I thought that might give him a chance, and it did, and I'm, I'm happy for him. I'm ecstatic for him. I mean, you know, he's... Uh, He's just an even killed kid. He's very mature uh, beyond his years, for one thing. I like to talk to him. Doesn't get overly excited. Um, has good sense. You know, they all do, the five seniors. But the, he was special because everybody knew when he was getting the ball. I mean, that's just a thing. And last year he was hobbled. Two years ago he split carries with Colin Troop, and he doesn't even play as a freshman. So to be that close to 3,000, to get over 1,000 this year and, and to get into third place, 
Um, that's another one of our greats uh, that's up at the top of that list. Caleb Palmer, good for him. First career touchdown uh, reception, and, and uh, I know you had a package in if you got down toward the goal line to try to get him in, and you did everything you could, and good for you, too, using those timeouts, and you found a play, dialed one up that finally uh, he was able to touch pay dirt uh, with the ball in his hands, and he had one, quite frankly, stolen away from him on a uh, horrendous call at West Shemokin, but he got it tonight. Nobody's going to take that one away. He almost didn't get it because I wasn't thinking earlier we got down inside the five twice, and I just didn't think of it. And I, We talked about it all week and had that package in, and you know we got up on the ball. We were trying to get some tempo, and then early uh, or mid-second half, I said to Joey Izzy, I said, you guys got to remind me. I said, now I feel bad. If we don't score again, I I'm going to feel terrible about that because we had opportunities. Well, we ran the little running play to him and that got stuffed and then we ran we've run that we've run that arrow concept really well where he slides across and um Braden hit him to the left which is harder to do I know Ward doesn't like that uh rolling to the left but that was a bootleg so there's a little bit of a change up there but coming back to the right and actually Conwell Valley covered it pretty well and Braden Braden battled tonight I mean it was tough you know they were they were flying high early and you know we had some mistakes but he finished strong um, and he he threw a dart and and we we caught it and got in and I was ecstatic. I mean, uh, you, you you want stuff like that for for your seniors and you know Jackson had got one earlier in the season and our two linemen. I mean, we're not gonna. I mean, Gary Green thinks he's a return guy and, and but him and Caden, it's just hard. You're not gonna get those guys touchdowns. So, but they they blocked and produced all those yards for, for Landon and his touchdown uh, that touchdown late tonight too. So. Um, you know, to segue into those guys, um, I feel bad for them. Uh, two and eight is not what we've been about, and I know they had higher expectations. Everybody around here did. You know, I'm not oblivious. I, I hear things, and I, I know what, you know, some people, their frustration, and I get it. I mean, that, I told the kids that it falls squarely on me because obviously um, I'm not doing enough or not getting our coaching staff to do enough to, to get things um, in the right direction. So. Um, we're going to have to do some things about that. Yeah, Greg, we'll close with this. Uh, as I said to you on our pregame show, we've been so blessed with success following Homer Center from a broadcasting standpoint. The fans, sometimes you get spoiled and then you get a slap in the face uh, or maybe a gut punch like this season. Uh, you've, in your 17 years, it's only the fourth time, and one of the four was the first year when you inherited a kind of a mess uh, and had to turn things around. So here you are, maybe you go back to 2011, and you put that puzzle together. Where does it all start? What do you, have you thought about what do I do to get this thing turned around? Well, it's going to start Tuesday. We're going to have an exit meeting, and um, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring up some things as far as you know, maybe what we lacked um, in the strategic tactical uh, part of it with coaches but I'm going to I'm going to call upon the returning guys um, I'm going to call upon their guts their willingness to to do more to get stronger it then starts with the weight room and continues on and we we got multi-sport athletes and we want that uh, cuz those are some of our best performers on the field um, and then it rolls into the spring and summer where we just have to be more dedicated and we have to be better and we have to be sharper at things. We just ha Everything has to be taken to a much higher level because we're going to have a lot of ability coming back next year. We really are. And I mentioned at one point, seven miles down the road, River Valley won one game last year, and look, they picked up their eighth win tonight, so it can be done. Yeah, and I referenced 2011 to our guys out here on the field, and, um, you know, that the group coming back can be special like that group was with uh, the guys that ended up being seniors in 13. And not to discount the seniors in 12, uh, there was like six or seven of those guys, and they really wanted to get it turned around, and we did. We had a, we had a really good season in 12, but that was this, those two seasons were the springboard for a district title, and, you know, other than, you know, last year and a half so we haven't really looked back since then that's been a really great thing with our program but we got humbled this year there's no other way to say it we got humbled um we were young yes but we we did take it on the chin we got slapped around and you know we're gonna see who wants to come back because i i i hope everybody does it's an underclassman and if they do we'll work with them and but there's gonna be it's gonna be tighter that's for sure 
Coach, all season long, we thank you for your fabulous cooperation uh, with me and all of our interviews. You know, as I said, this hasn't happened a lot, but when it has happened, sometimes, you know, we've put you to work on the other side. Uh, we kept the headset on you in the postseason, so yeah, I, Todd you, uh, Marino might be offering you that uh, lucrative I, contract. I would love that. I, I think you threw away the tape when we did the Ligonier game, and I thought I was spot on. I mean, that was in 2019. I was waiting for the encore, and here it is four years later. So, Well, I heard from your agent and the demand. <laughs> were out of reach. That's my wife is my agent. So well, you need to come. You need to come to me. <laughs> well, who no, knows? she would be like, "Go, get, <laughs> get out of the house. Get if you're, you're getting paid, go." You know. No, I would. I would love that. I, I don't like being in that situation, but um, I enjoyed that the other time that I got to do it. And you know, we want to be in the playoffs. That's that's the thing. And um, again, I, I can't say enough about our kids, even our underclassmen. They came to work. We have we've had good weeks of practices, but you know, it, it has to translate here, and that's on all of us. It's not. I told them. I said we can't put this squarely on the kids. That's just not fair. Um, so we all need to bounce back, as we say. It's not how hard you fall. It's how high you can bounce back, and we'll find out so. on August 23rd. United Valley will come here next okay. year. You want to talk about that yet, or is it too early? No, let's uh, call it a night. Yeah, that's, that's, that's good. Yeah. Coach, thanks all season Thank long. Thank you, guys. You're, you're the best in yeah. uh, your productions Wildcat been, football. Your we'll productions are tremendous, and I know the exposure for our kids and our community is second to none. We appreciate that. All right, head coach Greg Page. We're, we're going to slide you in to sign off. Uh, we'll flip the headset and shake the coach's hand and see if Ward can hang himself on all the cables here. Thanks, uh, Coach Page. As we wrap up another season of football, uh, out of town scoreboard. D, if you can hand me my phone there, I'll see if there's any finals that uh, popped in here. That purchase line game was late with uh, Penn's Manor. And um, by the way, Mike Arone, former assistant to Coach Page, Derry Trojans pounded Roger Beidel's Ligonier Valley Rams tonight, 35 to 15. So Mike is starting to tilt yeah, that program. Got about four wins this year. Good for them. Just looking here, um, if I have the final on purchase line, uh, boy, United Valley 49, Connemaw Township 7, Marion Center 27 nothing over West Shemokin. It was 22 to 19, the last score we had with 419 left, and I'm not seeing a, a final unless uh, someone sends it to me, uh, but Penn's Manor, uh, huge game. Uh, they were up on purchase line. River Valley, 41-6 final over Portage. They're going to host a playoff game, and Northern Cambria, 28-11 to in the Coal Bowl uh, over Cambria Heights. We're at a disappointing season, uh, and there's no other way to, to state it. I think Everybody knew it would be a challenging year given the uh, line situation and replacing all of the linemen. I think everybody was hoping for a little bit better, but you lose your quarterback in week three and uh, some other things happen and uh, the defense just never came around and uh, it ends up, it is what it is, as they say, two and eight and a pounding here tonight, 50 to 29. Your final thoughts on tonight and the season? Well, it was. It was frustrating. There were things that I've seen happen that uh, I I told you I haven't seen in, in years. Some of these plays, uh, Homer's defense has always been a source of pride, and uh, they just didn't have it this year. And, that, you know, the coaches worked hard. I'm not going to say the co it's the coach's fault. Sometimes you don't have enough bullets for your gun. I hate to use those, that phrase in this day and age, but they may not have had the talent. They didn't have the talent. Let's be honest about it. Uh, they had two games I think they should have won, but due to some calls, they didn't. So uh, that happens. That kind of swings the season a little bit. What happened here tonight, though, I have no explanation for. I really don't. Uh, I thought those kids were playing better coming into this game. They played pretty hard against Purchase Line. But tonight they were invisible. They weren't out there. Well, I think the best way of putting it, a lot of times it's not the X's and the O's, it's the Jimmy's and the Joe's, and there just weren't enough Jimmy's and Joe's to make the X's and O's work. <laughs> How about that analogy? Who are you coming up with this stuff? Here? I don't You're know. on a roll here. <laughs> well, we're always uh, good working with you. I'm sure we'll get together uh, for some playoff yeah. action, too, starting next weekend. We want to thank our fabulous sponsors all season long on both radio uh, of course, IRMC, our long partner with our IRMC high school sports nights across the entire Renda Media network of stations. 
the Grayston Coral Sportsman's Club on Renda Digital TV, uh, making it possible without them. We can't do what we do, and uh, we do enjoy it, win or lose. It's fun covering high school football in general, and of course, the team we've been covering together since 1994, for me a little bit longer, the Homer Center Wildcats, and every so often, uh, one of these seasons comes along, and it came along, uh, and uh, uh, was not a good one for Homer Center as they finish 2-8. and eight. Yeah, but we've, uh, we've said time and again that, you know, we're very fortunate. Uh, we've, we've got the be in state games and won district championships. And a lot of teams in this conference have not done any of that. So, uh, you know, you got to take what the good, the bad with the good, I guess, is the way of putting it. So that is going to do it. A special thanks to our entire Renda team, starting with our sales force that uh, makes it possible with some of the sponsors that I've mentioned, and there's so many of them. And uh, the people behind the scenes, our traffic department, our business department, uh, our board ops. Uh, we appreciate all of our board ops. We uh, had board op appreciation tonight at the radio stations, our own producer of Wildcat Sports at WCCS, Michael Burdick, our digital manager, John Smathers, uh, subbing tonight, Dee Ober, who's helped us on a few occasions in a variety of ways. Dee, thank you very much. And to you and the team at SeaWorld Satellites, they helped actually facilitate the video stream of Indiana football tonight with some special equipment we needed because of uh, no internet in a certain press box at Plum High School. Our statistician, Jerry Rossi, with us all season long. Our spotter, Dennis Mester and I could go on. So thanks to all. Yes. Ward, thank you. Speaking you for our entire broadcast team and our sports family at Renda Media, Mark Burdig, for a final time from Memorial Field in Homer City on our first Commonwealth Bank postgame show, the final score, Connemaw Valley 50 and the Homer Center Wildcats 29. Both teams finish 2-8. and eight. From Memorial Field, until we talk to you next week, from Northern Cambria, I do believe, is where I will be for the opening round of the playoffs on Renda Digital TV. Mark Burdick bidding you a very pleasant good evening and a great weekend ahead from Homer City, everybody. You've been listening to an Indiana Regional Medical Center high school football sports night on News Talk AM 1160 and 101.1 FM.